Hello, everybody, and welcome, no matter where you are in the world, whether it's day, morning, or night. We're live with Combo Breaker 2018. My name is Ketchup, and I'm joined this time by Mr. Aquaman. How's it going, buddy? Doing just fine. I am so excited for Mortal Kombat here at Combo Breaker. I hope you guys are, too. We are in top eight action, and I cannot wait. We're going back in time a little bit right now. I think you can say that again. You know, MKX, this was really the premier NetherRealm game before Injustice 2 came about with the IPS, which is also going on at Combo Breaker. Stay tuned for that later. But right now, it's going to be combat time. Our first match in winners is going to be a mixture of old versus new. And I think you know a thing or two about young Rewind, who's stepping up to the plate. But he's going up against Echo Fox Scar. Absolutely. This is this is a veteran versus one of the young and uppercomer guys uh, in, in Rewind that's shown so much skill, especially late in Mortal Kombat's lifespan. And Scar, of course, over the game's lifespan, becoming really the number two behind Sonic Fox overall. And one of the few to go toe to toe with the young Fox throughout the game. I mean, I'm so excited to see what we're going to see here because you've got a guy that's dominated uh, so far in, in the bracket with Scar, you, you, using a really dominating character in Demo Song. You've got Rewind, who's got a couple of tricks up his sleeve, uh, especially right before top eight, picking a character I didn't even see coming. And I can't wait to see what this kid's got because he's he's picked up where Scar and Sonic kind of left off with how they train and how, how they think and how they approach the game. And Rewind's picked up right where they left off. And he's, he's, he's kind of the next guard as we get into this. And he's picking who I want to see, and that is his Raiden. And he had the most crisp one back in the day and going up against Scar's Smoke. Displacer Raiden is not easy to play. It's uh, it's like deceivingly execution heavy. You've got to have a lot of clutch execution on just the standalone strings that you have to go for. Thunder God was a bit easier to play in Displacer. You kind of lose extreme rushdown um, at the cost of a really good teleport. One of the best teleports in the game. You can combo into this teleport or use it to get in on someone like Smoke who's going to be hyper defensive. And here we go. This is going to be our first round of winners. Reminder guys, this is best of five territory throughout the entire top eight. Everyone already getting things started, utilizing that EX teleport, having some plus frames, and opening up Scar immediately with the throw. This man's already got all the momentum in his favor, putting him to the corner, and he's going to try to apply some mix on the beautiful forward 1-2 back two straight. But he's going to get caught by the forward four, the standard classic mid, but he drops the harpoon. That's going to be costly. He's going to miss both damage and setup potential. And now Scar's in big trouble. Easy hit confirm, and if you guys know Mortal Kombat going back in time, the Superman going to carry you corner to corner and rewind drawing first blood here on our very first match of top eight. Now, there's one thing that Displacer Raiden really needs to be the most effective. That's going to be Bar. We're going to see a conversion here. The 1-1, one, one, forward 1-2. One, There's the Superman to get the corner carry, but... Oh, my oh. God, the raw overhead. No fear, but no break from Scar. He's waiting until he gets opened up one more time. There's one the up. escape. Oh, it's going to be the mix here. Nice staggering off the ones and even baits out the armor and just waiting his turn. Rewind's so smart right now. Just letting Scar kind of take his turn. And utilizing that to his advantage, but he's going to get some hits done here. Now here comes that smoke mix up. He's going to get a knockdown. Actually, not necessarily restands that smoke gets. He gets so much knockdown from that air grab. He gets almost like a vortex situation off that regardless, because to wake up an MKX, you've got to have bar. It needs to be armored or it's not a wake up. And that's not something that we see too much out of Scar at a competitive level, which is simply going for the vortex. He likes to just go for the damage and, you know, play it out from there. The wake up vicinity blast to his armor, purposefully neutral ducking from Scar though. That was clutch and now he's got the bar to get the job done. Probably going to be the round if he gets one mix up. Goes in for the overhead, good block. Oh my god, the invincible phase through. One of the best reversals in the game with bar used. He has some plus frames as well on the EX smoke bombs Ooh. and what a tech on the throw, oh. which is a 50-50 in and of itself in this game. And Scar staying alive. Now God, look at those resources, man. Rewind the second he gets a bar of meter. He only has one shot for a defensive vicinity Ooh. blast, but oh. And one of the biggest NJPs in the game covering the sky, stay out of my airspace. Unfortunately, used a little bit too much sprint, so he didn't quite get the conversion, but phase through. Tries to catch the forward one, but not today. Back-to-back -back pokes. Triborg's pokes are so fast, you really can get away with the odd back-to-back -back poke on block. Down three. Oh, he drops it! That's going to be costly, I think. You're going to lose a lot of setup from that. But he's still going to be in control temporarily. Rewind. Only one bar. That's going to be hit. Confirm into Smoke Bomb. Here comes a full combo. And what's the mix? It's done. He is going to oh. get up with the low, but no commitment by Scar. That's going to give Rewind a little bit of life here. Execution kind of dwindling down there. This is a very tight combo. You talked about how hard this character is to use. And we're going to have the nitty gritty and the ducks by Rewind on the string. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he has no bar to confirm, but he is going to spend one of them on the conversion. Oh, the 4-3 oh, connects. Sliding Scar. into this man's DM, Scar said, uh, 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 not today. And he's like obviously saying, hold up, I think actually, we're going to have a check about something right there. I wonder what they're having a look at. But for now, we'll actually quickly talk about that matchup. So consistently in that first game, we did see Raiden where 
one of the best reversals in the game, especially post-patch. This game had one final patch where armored reversals historically would always launch. In the final patch of MKX, right before Injustice 2, this was, for the most part, not the case. Armor would rarely launch, and it would just kind of serve as a get-off-me tool. But at the expense of that, a lot of armored moves were given two hits of armor, so it was almost impossible to armor break them. That vicinity blast with Raiden has a massive hitbox, it's safe on block, and it can catch jump outs as well. Yes, so it it's a really like a golden move. It's, it, it does everything for you, right? It has two hits of armor. If, if it anti-airs, you can, you can get a full combo. And if it hits uh, on the ground, there's, it's so plus, Yep. It's, it's not even your turn. Actually, we've seen so many cases, actually, not even of Displacer, but Thunder God Raiden, where he gets a restand situation from Vicinity Blast. And then the Thunder God strings build so much bar. It's pretty much the gift that keeps on giving. It's pretty crazy. But uh, Smoke, definitely one of those top tier characters. I mean, while we have this kind of temporary break and find out what's going on, Smoke, one of the best characters in the game, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, those top tier characters by the end of the game. We had Shinnok, you know, we had Sector, we had Smoke. Smoke in particular, he plays MKX so well. He's got great mids, yes, he's he got does. great mix, he's got great reversals. And he's really, he's, uh, him and Sector probably why they're, you know, the, the, two of the top characters in the game because the Triborgs, that's one thing that the other ones lack are the advancing mids and the actual you know, play the game, whereas, you know, you look at Cyrex, you look at Cyber Sub-Zero, um, they actually struggle in that, in that you know, that, that, that footsie range, you know, that, that where, you know, everyone else has a nice advancing mid where they're going to have to struggle, and, you know, there are a lot more 4-3s, a lot more lows that they have to play with, and, uh, yeah, it's something that Sector and Smoke get to play a lot better. Yeah, and then you look at reversals as well as another one of those key talking points. To be a really good character in MKX, uh, for the most part, unless you're Quan Chi, of course, shout out to the Bonehawk brothers, but I mean, having a really good reversal kind of changes, I think, how your metagame uh, essentially goes, and that's because of the wake-up system. Having armor and being able to wake up is make or break. And Smoke, one of the only characters in the game that actually has an invincible meter burn reversal. That's Smoke away, completely invincible, and it can whiff punish loads of things. Now, here's the change. We're going to see the change to, I think, is that? Let me have a look. Uh, that's Jackie. Shotgun. That is Jackie Bay Briggs, and this is who Rewind broke out in order to make top eight. And it was it was for a very very uh, specific matchup where he was able to shut down. Um, I forgot who his opponent was ranked for top eight, but doing a really good job. I actually, actually have right here. Yeah, it was Cusco. He actually used a full auto to shut down the approachment of Covert Ops Sonya. And it is going to be Shotgun Jackie. Okay, look, look at yeah. your button check. So this may not be who we actually get to see. Maybe not. But it, it's, oh my God. But By the way, guys, those normals, those stanky legs, they're really hard. And you just did seven in a row. What they, is life? They're really hard to do. Hey, this is a young man's game. You know? Yes, it is. <laughs> they got the execution. And this is actually a decent pick here before Rewind. You know, very... Uh, if, if Smoke has one weakness, it's someone that's very, very aggressive and has quick mix-ups um, and is not, not, not able to let him get his buttons out. Uh, I know, like, like the total confidence is someone who's very oppressive with mids. And someone like that is Cassie Cage. If you've got oppressive mids and you're not able to let a Smoke play his game, if, if, if you keep him on the defensive, especially knock down in the corner, and you can bait out the Smoke away, it does have recovery, then you're playing a really good game. And I think that's what Rewind's going to try to do here, which is shut down the buttons of Smoke. Yeah, and Cassie's Anybody got that advantage as well. One of the key strings for Smoke is the back 2-1. Sure. It's the Essentially, it's a mid and then it's a phase away Never teleporting mind. on the other side. Small characters can actually neutral crouch that second hit. And it's such a key button that Smoke, in some cases, has to use. But against Cassie, Scar's not going to get away with it. And he's going to know that being the premier Smoke of Mortal Kombat X. And his, his number one training partner happens to main this character right here. He's, he's going to have the experience of Hollywood Cassie. But rewind, he's going to hit confirm that back one, two into flip, ending it in nut punch. We're going to get a little bit of a mix up situation. That string's going to be plus as well. And it's very smart from Scar to wait for the block down three, then it's his turn. Absolutely, guys. And that's what it's all about with pokes in these oh. games. What an anti crossover. Cartwheel going into some true plus frames off the nut punch. And guessing right to Scar on the 50 50. So Smoke Boy's going to take his turn. And, and, and there's he... that string right there. Confirm it into Meter Burn Smoke Bomb just to be that little bit safer. And what's great about Smoke is that he doesn't really have to overcommit as long as he has the Smoke Bomb to back it up, especially the meter, as well the Smoke Ways, the Smoke Torses. And, he, and he's very visually distracting when there's Smoke everywhere. What a big <gasps> drop by Rewind! That's actually going to be knowledge. That regardless of how this round goes, Scar just got some really important knowledge on Rewind. Two times in a row we saw back 2-1, there was no neutral crouch attempt. And again, memory does fail me whether she's one of those characters that can, but I'm pretty sure she can. But if not, that's just going to be good for Scar. He's just going to get that good mid poke. And Scar, who's one of the best in Mortal Kombat X history at taking throws, wasn't able to do it two times in a row right there because in and of, in and of itself is a 50-50 here catch-up. Yeah, very much so. Taking the minus frames with the grab. All right, rewind looking good. He's been consistently low on bar. And I think in some of these matchups, only having one bar and then spending it, it just comes down to how quickly you can build it again because the utility just explodes when you've got one bar of meter, particularly with Cassie Cage. There's a confirm full combo from Scar, having to go for the back two because he couldn't sprint in there. No stamina to go with. Oh, overhead block. 
it really gives you utilize his turn to go for the throw right there because Scar's been blocking so well. And uh, Rewind's had to rely on reads and reactions so far in order to get the damage. And this paid off. And this is this is tough right here for Smoke because you have to wait until your turn. And that's what Scar's defense is all about. Excellent throw tech. But he's going to jump into the pot. This is the Jinsei Chamber. Some oh. of the best interactables catch the board. 1-3. And we're going to get a high damage corner combo into a mix. No, what if he dropped the harpoon there? What was that? Unfortunate. Another throw for Rewind. He's gotten three off on Scar so far. It's a lot of damage. He just needs one more. Oh my god! And the Scar special betting it all on the line with DX Teleport. And he's going to take the round. If you're going to be confident that Smoke's going to wake up with Smoke away, I mean, maybe the last thing Rewind was waiting for was a risky teleport. Oh my word. Doesn't confirm into forward 1 3, so he's going to drop the Smoke Bomb. That might actually be quite costly. He gets tagged by the back one again. Here's that meter burn nut punch, guaranteed situation. He's just gonna take the string. Good chip damage, great situation afterwards. No reason to overextend yet, but that's gonna be a confirm into the flip kick. Drops the combo himself, but he's still got a reset. Oh my goodness, all these buttons are working right now. Rewind, the pressure is on in the corner. Buttons being pressed down three. What is Scar gonna do about it? My word. Yeah, takes the minus frames. Catches the grab. Risky to go for the forward 4-3. That is duckable. And Scar does have the resources to mount a true master comeback right now. <gasps> But really good pace by Rewind oh. coming up with the 4-3 and the chip out the gun. Oh. That's gonna do it, Rewind! Gonna tie things up at 1-1 one one right now. Technically, forward 3-4, four, that low slide is a little bit punishable. But if you can just get back 1-2 for free, it's a guaranteed chip damage. I mean, why would Rewind overextend? Why risk it? Just take what's guaranteed. Very smart stuff. And there's a grab. And like I said, there's a specific reason to keep Victoria with Cassie. He wants to bully Scar uh, and Smoke in general. And that's what he's been able to do in this corner, which is just stop the button presses so Oh far. my and word! what a whip punished by Scar! <gasps> drops the NJP. We are seeing a few drops. I mean, just remember guys, there are so many tournaments these guys have all been entering. Uh, some of these guys might be a tad rusty. And that's not a pun because he's playing smoke, I was about smoke, to I say, was that a pun because Literally no pun intended, but I'll take it. I'll take it, mate. Here we go, excellent. Blocking enough punch, but the EX not able to punish there. No range. Oh my goodness, good air to air. Gonna get a restart with the harpoon. He's gonna go for a quick mix in order to close out this round. Go for the damage and drop it. Now he's in the corner. This is bad position for Scar. Who has no resources to break. He's gonna need a lot of damage. Some hits done off of the EX not punch. No one dropped it. Yep, he's just gonna be content, letting it go. Even if that was a drop, he's not gonna be too worried. Taking the plus frames of the down four and getting a grab. Grabbing out of the corner. Those grabs, they are 50-50 situations. You take one way for grabbing away, another way for grabbing in front. In the corner, most of the time, they're gonna try and grab and keep you in there. And there we go, there's the tech. Going underneath the back 2-1. And that nut punch, you guys, if, if Finn gets down to a tight situation, it's fully invincible, and it's one of the only, it's really the only thing in this game where you cannot take damage. It's actually really funny how we're just talking about that seeing as we saw Jody Cage and MK9 putting in work yesterday, because he was another one of the only characters with an invincible nut punch. Runs in the family. Ooh. Oh, that's gonna hurt so good. Easy hit from there by Scar as well. Into some damage, another restand. And he's gonna get a setup off this. He's gonna take the damage. Oh, drops the final hit, so he's gonna lose the plus frames on the air grab. And good recognition by Rewind on the fly to see it whiff and actually get a punish. Dropped it up on his own. But you know, this is still decent for Rewind. If he falls. <gasps> oh my god, I'm not sure that was worth it. He's gonna pay the ultimate price for that one. How much damage are we gonna get? He has bar. One more to spend. He can now use chip damage. The threat of the gunshots becomes very apparent, but the jump in into forward four Scar staying alive. You're, you were absolutely right. It was getting down to that chip out gun territory. So scary, but caught over committing. Both of these guys have, uh, it, well, actually, especially in this particular matchup, Rewind's been caught being overly aggressive in the corner, and Scar's burned up about three or four times so far. Good awareness to punish the 4 3 4. Just waiting for that final hit. Can be a mix up in some ways, but just betting the farm on another teleport. I'm just not sure that's going to be worth the risk challenging it because remember, regular nut punch is nowhere near as plus as meter burn nut punch. Yeah, you do have a little bit of breathing room there. Ooh, holding the jump in there was Rewind too, but a hefty health lead, and luckily the throw recovered in time on that EX smoke board. He's gonna take those minus frames. I like the back dash. He is gonna be minus, but not punishable on that string. And the reads there from Rewind, he knows he's punished the forward 3-4, so it's unlikely Scar's gonna go for it again. And, and it's, it's scary there too, because the four can be so delayed off the 4-3 as well. I guess the throw. Okay, the knockdown. Look how much meter Scar has. He can do a couple of, uh, couple of mixes if he wants to. If he oh. land a hit. Tries to whiff punish. He's going to take the plus frames. The good crouch, and that's going to be another game. Rewind on the verge of moving on in this winner's bracket. They go straight in for rematch. Not surprised for this. I mean, Scar, he'd spent, I mean, he was already known, you know, primarily as a Sonya player back in the day, but by the very end of MKX, Smoke really was his bread and butter, particularly in the final patch where Smoke was just out of this world good. Yeah, and he used Demo Sonya even this tournament just to get top eight against Tweety. 
more damage. We're not going to see a nut punch here because he's actually rather going to take the plus frames from the knockdown. And that's what happens. Again, again there's a game plan of being super aggressive against uh, Smoke in the corner, but you do have to sometimes stop and look for that Smoke port because if you overcommit, you die. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so much respect, I think, is demanded from Smoke in this game. Wow, expecting the 1-1 stagger. Rewind just makes all these really amazing small micro decisions, and they're almost always on the money. Now, that being said, something I had to see out of Rewind that's a little bit of tech against Smoke in the corner It's just throwing a couple of down ones because it's going to auto break behind, and it's going to check it both ways. <gasps> There's the overhead. Clean opening. Scar still in the fight. No, he drops the 1-1-4. That is unfortunate. Rewind now is going to be on match point. That's a combo you don't want to drop, Aquaman. Absolutely. That, that, that was his way back into this set. Now Rewind just one health bar away from sending Scar to losers. This would be a great result from Rewind. I mean, I know the work is not going to be done here. He has so many opponents left in his path, but being able to really sort of conquer some of those offline nerves that Rewind has historically actually suffered with oh, pretty if, severely. If you, if you notice, Rewind went for the only conversion that doesn't require stamina. Still dropped it, though, very tight. Having to go away with punish, but doesn't confirm it to smoke. I don't think he was confident it was going to work. He has got bar. He has to be so careful with those resources. Tries Ooh. it down two. I'm not sure what that was. That might have just been a raw old Madden down yeah, two right was, there. That was back to the wall. We're going for that mean 14 percent and the buttons of Cassie just abusing smoke right now. And we're chipping out territory. Anything into the EX guns off block, and that's going to do it. Rewind, three one over Scar in our first match of top eight here. That is a great result for Rewind. He played the matchup super well. I think the character change definitely benefited him. I feel like Displacer, if it, if it was Sector instead of Smoke in the Triborg matchup, then I think Displacer would have been almost a better pick. But in that situation, I think Cassie she has all the tools to deal with Smoke, even though Smoke himself is a phenomenal character. She has the good mids, she has the smaller hitbox, and things like Nut Punch, they made a huge difference yep. of just challenging what Smoke normally gets almost for free. And Scar did a really good job. He had his opportunities, a couple of costly drops um, there. He, he, he did definitely, you know, the, the Smoke was out of the corner. He caught Rewind slipping a lot. Uh, but yeah, it was just Cassie's buttons versus Smoke buttons, and Cassie's were winning a lot of the time. And you saw a difference uh, from when he was playing Raiden's. Uh, Scar was a little bit less active, it looked like, and having to respect more himself. Which is something that, again, you said you just have to respect smoke all the time. But these guys, these characters with really good mids, are good at shutting that down. Okay, so we're going into our next match in this winner's bracket. <laughs> the reigning champion stepping up to the plate. It's going to be NASA Tekken Master. Was able to win Combo Breaker last year. I believe the grand finals was Silver Eye versus Tekken Master. That was the tournament Tekken Master actually conquered the Fox he for the did. first time in a while. And it was a great and, result. And, and was with a brand new character as well, wasn't it? Was it Shinnok? Last year. Yeah, in the final patch. Well, the thing about Tekken Master, which a lot of people don't know, is that he always was one of those players in MKX that just had so many characters in his pocket. He was known as, you know, the guy that, I oh know, obviously he was put on the map in EVO 2016 with War God Koto Khan, uh, with Swarm Queen Devora. I know you're a big fan of that Koto Khan, yeah, being a Koto Khan player yourself. But he's going up against none other than Killer Jinok. Now, this guy is was a Johnny Cage enthusiast for a very long time, and he still has a phenomenal cage, but he has, as of late, been playing loads of Crystalline Tremor. Yes, he has, and when we saw him to get in the top eight, it looked scary. And this character is built to be relentless. The pressure is meant to just mount on you. He puts on free armor, he comes at you swinging, he, he can generate plus frames, free. build a lot of bar. He's got mix-ups, but he is built to be oppressive. There's one thing that Crystalline Tremor has, which really is, I think, a trump card against a lot of other characters, and it's a mechanic that is unique to him. And that's when you pick Crystalline, you get the armor. It's pretty much Doomsday armor from Injustice, where it's not quite conventional armor like your Sorcerer Quan or something. Um, it's the fact that when he has that armor up and you hit him, he basically shatters at a set time, which actually allows him to punish certain things by getting hit on purpose. No other character in the game has that tool, except for this variation. Bear in mind, there's like a hundred variations in this game. That's like good odds if you're a Tremor player. <laughs> and the fact that he gets it off of every knockdown, it's really quick on startup. He's get it anywhere on the screen. Yep, and they're button checking. You guys are getting warmed up here. This is going to be a great matchup. And looking at this top eight on one side, you know, the Americans were duking it out. And on the other side of winners here, the international second master and killer both coming in here representing um, was it uh oh, Tekken, Chile, I believe. For well it's Killer Jinok, I think is the right. Oh Brazil, Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. And Tekken Master right from Bahrain. Very, very small part of the world. It's amazing he's even at this level with the limited experience he has had. But there's a oh confirmed my goodness. tremor. The knockdown begins. 
going in for just sheer pressure. And there's the wake up. We talked about armored wake ups not launching. Shinnok's one of the few characters that can still launch off armor. It just costs him two bars of meter to do so. Guess what? Both of these characters do because there's a flash parry on the side of Crystalline Tremor where he has an armored normal coming at you that can launch. Indeed. And with this matchup, we can see Imposter Shinnok. He does steal Tremor's essentially straight punch, which means that if you're going to be Imposter Shinnok, you can combo off your conversions the same oh way goodness. Tremor can. And that's going to be a good round one. How risky were those unblockables with the fact that Imposter has a teleport? Very risky. It, I mean, and Tekken Master has some of the crispest instant air teleports in the business. It's a massive risk, but he's going to take it. And it did work, so of course, well worth it. We're going to see a conversion. All tries to end, but can't quite get the timing. Oh, it's good to do jump kick for the plus frames right there. It's really good to Oki with. If they're just going to get hit by it, that's almost like mega plus frames, because they have to get up another time. Yeah, the cancel. You have to show a lot of respect to Shinnok. Those hell sparks really are no joke. Taking the plus frames off the rolling cutter, but there's the punish. That overhead is not safe on block. I wonder if Killer's gonna take the hit here, simply to not give Tekken. Okay, so in that situation, you can get take that hit, and you don't give Tekken Master meters, and you give yourself more meter going into the third round, but he actually believed in himself there to get the block and try to win. Yeah, because chip damage is so extreme in Mortal Kombat games, and some of those situations where you get re and you know the chance of making the comeback is unlikely, you do let yourself get hit just to deny that meter gain, because we've seen how important armor and meter burn in general is because it's combo extensions here comes an opening for not gets the knockdown meaty here comes the hard to block but there's the challenge using the straightforward shoulder just to dodge the rock hard to block of all that was that was even a, that was the raw shoulder as well and he's in the one bar he had used for the ender and just like that killer gonna take game number one here tekken master the current champion here at combo breaker down early and he's got a plethora of characters he immediately back to character select screen as well his devora looked incredibly crisp to get into this top eight very impressive pressure herself he has so many characters that he can play i don't think in the final patch though he plays kotal khan at all anymore he, he does not and you know what i know exactly why because he uses devora here for the same exact reason oppression and she still does it with mids yeah but kotal khan unfortunately doesn't have the same uh style of pressure because the back ones are high he still has incredible mids some of the best mids in the game still but he can't make a, lot, make a lot of mind games off. RIP back one, boys, but we're going to see the change to Swarm Queen. The running system was changed in the final patch as well, where if you uh, go in for... Basically, if, you're, if you get caught running in, you lose your entire bar of stamina, which hurts run cancel characters quite significantly. Especially if you try and run cancel and get caught, all of your stamina disappears, which means if you get opened up, you need to have full stamina to use your combo breaker. Rolling card confirmed. No combo from Zinok. I don't think he was quite ready for that to work. I'm curious if Techmaster took the hit because he wasn't in the corner and couldn't get comboed. Oh my oh! god! Savage down two from One of Killer Zinok. In the game, why not? And it's gonna get the kill. That was beautiful by Killer. I love, love me a good Savage down two here in Mortal Kombat. Now those full screen, that armor right there, that is such a game changer. Full screen, that insect lift was normally full combo against Crystalline when he's got that armor. No such luck. Tries to go in for the flash power. I think he expected the down four. Yes, confirm. He's good damage. And what's so scary about Swarm Queen Devora is you have to eat some bugs for breakfast. No, he goes for the raw damage itself. Yeah, I think if he has only like just only one bar, oh! this time's the run cancel. Gives her the swirly, puts her back to full screen, flexes up, and here we go. Yeah, the down three is going to connect, but the armor's active, so the down three not going to be as plus as it normally is. There's the flex, taking the safe space, but. I actually love the overpositor oh. strike because that's going to chew through that crystalline armor. On the spot adaptations from Tekken Master. Here comes plus frames. And look how much meter he's hanging on. Oh my god! No way! He actually still has those? Okay, Killer's still been playing this game. Those are tight conversions right Oh, he there. has. He has for sure. Now, we're near OTG territory. Has to break. One more hit in Tekken Master. And big trouble! Oh. But the raw ground pound. And that's going to be our first brutality of the tournament. By the way, this isn't over. We, we have more to come. But <laughs> oh, I miss Brutality so much. And guess what? What's so good about Brutalities? There's no start rematch. You gotta hold those! No choice. No choice but to do it. My favorite, personal favorite, the Sector Homing Missile. We just do it in teabag while they wait for the inevitable fate. Oh! Killer's done a good job of... Uh, well, it's Tremor's kind of built in with forward movement. Forward movement, uh, moving strings are really good against those uh, swarms. As one... Ooh! And he cross up down one. You know, he's being brave right now. Back to back down one. The thing is, the forward one is advancing, but it is a high. Does lose to low pokes, but there's the armor once again. <laughs> Armored launcher, boys. Post pets were in there. What year is it? Armoring the gap in rolling color, but to be honest, I don't think <gasps> that was in Tekken Master's favor. He gets the overhead, but no combo to follow up. And Zinok is one round away 
from facing Rewind in the winners' finals of Combo Breaker 2018. Okay, started, and this is good position for Tech Master. He can kind of try to push Killer. Very good stopping the approach of the forward one with the poke, but not taking his turn afterwards. And we're already back to the corner, and Killer's in side. And there's the flex. The thing is, once he's got the armor, he's going to be way more brave to do oh. these unsafe moves because the armor says no to unsafety. And that was, was you, you have to put in the work with Crystalline Tremor to take the hit of that, the third, the third hit of that string, and then punish accordingly. That's so smart. All right, here comes Tekken Master. He's going to get a grounded combo right here. Run cancel. He's going to have limited stamina. Should have it back by the end of this combo, but he's got to watch out. Even if he builds Breaker, he's got to have full stamina to break, which is why run cancel characters are a bit more risky in this final patch. Down three, taking the plus move. Jumping out! Brave stuff, but not scoured out by Tekken Master. <gasps> my word. My god, still oh, two! Man, swinging. He is swinging. Uh-oh. No up confirm. Armor still activated. Excellent block on the low. You can fuzzy the low wall overhead. Oh my god, that was just a forward two. Oh! And he tried to get away from that swarm, but not able to. And Tekken Master on the board a little bit here, having a round. Good position as well. Try to get aggressive, I like that, because if he got anything unblocked there, he was pushing Killer to the corner. And the second they use those trade situations, Shinnok is just going to use that trade to flex again. More unsafe overheads, but not punished by Tekken Master. You've got to be really on the money to punish it. Tries to flash parry back-to-back -back armor. And he <gasps> almost has another bar to go with. And Great what, one out. of the biggest mids in the game that wasn't talked about is that back two from Trevor reach into the skies. Absolutely. Oh my god, more armor. Tekken Master's in a really in a bad situation. No big deal. <gasps> he, he can take a hit. Armor's up. Taking the plus frames on the down one, but plenty of work left to go. He's out of stamina now, and Jadok's going to be wise to it. Taking the down one. You can poke Tremor quite effectively when he hasn't got flex. A lot of his best tools are highs. Run cancel. He's got no stamina. He had to dash. That could have gone punch some plus frames here. All he needs to chip out territory. Oh, the block breaker. That was his only option. Oh my god, the armor. This is not good for Tekken Master. <gasps> That's going to oh! be the brutality on the rolling cutter. The second he jumped back, his fate was sealed. Off with her legs, killer. Going to move on to winner's finals. Congratulations, Tekken Master. Going to move down on the losers. And on the loser's side of the bracket, we've got a couple of, uh, a lot of internationals going at it. Uh, we've got a foxy grandpa going up against Cusco. And then Waz versus the Maja. Waz coming here from Australia, I'm making actually, some noise. I'm really proud of Waz because Waz has always been more. We're, we're going to talk more about him in a little bit, but he was always well known uh, in the Australian scene. The very small scene, but the very passionate community. And it's always nice when their best player can travel to somewhere as big as Combo Breaker and really show they have what it takes. But going into our next match in losers, Cusco versus Foxy. As far as I'm aware, right, Cusco is an online player that's been playing. A lot of MK anyway. He plays Sonya, right? It's a Sonya player. Cusco is actually infamous for being that guy when we talk about Mortal Kombat X that never stopped playing. Yeah. He, he loves Mortal Kombat, and that's what I personally love and respect about this man. And he's a loyalist. He is not a Sonya player. He's a covert ops Sonya player. He likes Week to, one. <laughs> week one, day one, he likes to mix. And you've got, on the other side, a foxy grandpa. I mean, in the same position as Tekken Master just a year prior where he got second at Evo to Sonic Fox in this game. Yeah, Foxy's had his fair share of success. I mean, Mortal Kombat X was the game that really kind of exploded his popularity. I know, you know he's had a fair amount of success in Injustice 2. He got second place at the E-League World Finals. And it was really sort of premier dead shot of Injustice 2. Um, but coming back to MKX, MK really is his favorite game. Of all the fighting games that Foxy plays, MK is always kind of seen as his home. You know, Kung Lao is his favorite fighting game character of all time. That's why even to this day, even though Molina really fits him like a glove, he still tries to play Kung Lao for some matchups because Absolutely. he just loves the character so much. And I'm curious who we're actually going to see in this matchup because uh, going up against Covert off Sonya, um, I actually think that Molina might be the better pick on paper. I think so too, for sure. I uh, think she's going to have better tools in the neutral to deal with it. I think if this was pre-patch and Kung Lao had the armored spin, I think that's... That was basically a, a, a thorn in Sonya's side, especially cover ops because of the gaps, exactly, but not anymore. Because, uh, and, and I'm going to talk about it mid, mid match. I love talking about cover because of the military stance cancel. Uh, what the options are mid screen versus the corner, and, and what, you're, what you have defensively to deal with it. Because when you break it down, it actually doesn't sound so bad. And having a, a quick arm and reversal uh, mid screen is going to shut down the overhead, which is the cartwheel, and it's going to shut down the command grab, which is gaps in both. Mid screen, if there's no gap, uh, that, that's the low option, you're not going to get launched. So really, uh, mid-screen, the risk-reward, it's actually in your favor 
for, for the person with armor. I feel like it's a real treat that we're going to be seeing some more cover up Sonya because we just saw Sonya put in so much work in MK9, which was Sonya as a character in MK9. It, this is the closest to this is yeah. this is the inspiration. Cover up Sonya is basically MK9 Sonya as a variation, so it's kind of like almost nice. The same way we saw Cassie Cage, Hollywood, the predecessor, sorry, the um, sequel, I guess, to Johnny Cage. Yep. We're seeing it again with Sonya in MKX, but here we go. This is our first round of losers in this top eight. It's going to be PXP of Foxy Grandpa and Cusco, North America versus. UK. We're going to see who takes this one in this elimination match. And he is going to go with Kung Lao and already off to a great start. Push the corner, has the bar and the hat, which is automatic footsies, by the way, in this game. Put that hat on, it's going to do some work for you. I mean, Foxy has a term that he coined called spin footsies. Does actually get the 4 4. Remember, folks, hat spin into 4 4 is a two frame link. Not easy to do at all. And there oh, we go, there's the drop. drops the link right there as well. I guess like the, the benefit will be, even if he drops 4-4, it is plus 2 on block, so it guarantees a down 4, basically. But that's kind of like the best of a bad situation. You ideally want that damage. You can go for easier conversions, but the 4-4 is where the damage really adds up. You're talking about the best possible scenario right now for Foxy, taking that first round and holding on to an entire stick of butter right here. Hell yeah. Ooh. Uh, Four two, which is a fantastic button in and of itself here. Kung Lao catch him with the overhead this time, not drop the combo. This will be huge meterless damage, and he's still going to hold on to all of this bar. Drops the combo, but Cusco giving him an opening once again. The four four is going to work for another time in this round. Foxy having not having to use any bar right now. He's had an expensive situation right now. Yep, expecting a grab attempt. Mia Burn has been significantly more plus on block than regular. And this is signature Foxy Grandpa. If, if you're blocking, he's going to go for the throw. I mean, he suffocates you. Foxy absolutely suffocates you in this game. There was no reason to even go for that. And he tries to go for the uh, grab brutality. That's one of his favorite things. And he actually likes to go for two spins and then a Tempest meter burn. But not today. He and wants to go for the learn from this. And the two opportunities that Cusco had to generate some pressure, Foxy had answers for it right out of the gate. He wasn't even able to play the game. No, not at all. It's uh, a very, very oppressive style of play from Tempest Lao. But it actually is quite simple pressure but it's just good mids and grabs and that's all Kung Lao needs but a nice catch from Kuko dropping the combo though gets caught with the back two forced to break nice good patience he's got one of the best at recognizing uh, people in the air get the anti air Sonya has an amazing down two shades of the flash and injustice as well in the corner we go Nice hard knockdown. No little head from Foxy. I think he's actually confident on Cusco staying there and delaying wake up because he had no bar. When someone hasn't got bar for the wake up attack, normally delayed wake up is the first call to action someone's going to go for. And hope that hope that you overcommitted and went early and, yep. and catch you with Exactly. Good grab. Nice mix up from Cusco. Yeah, Foxy trying oh. to get out. Tries to whiff punish, but walks right into that one. More grabs. Oh, oh it down. The ground. Oh my goodness, and he gets to trade with the spin. Okay, Cusco's on the board, utilizing the huge buttons that Mama Blade secretly does have. Now, under normal circumstances, Foxy actually would have comboed off that trade, but because he was one hit away from death, not the time you want to trade spin wake-ups, and there's the jump back dive kick. Forced to break from Foxy now. And one of my favorite things implemented here in Mortal Kombat, you saw Foxy try to break, break before Stamina got back, you heard that. He said, uh-uh, you didn't have enough. That's the biggest, like, what are you doing, mate, in the whole game. He's trying to sprint, and he goes, eh. That's on automatic footsies, turn up pressure, and Cusco a couple of throw breaks here. Had to, had to have done his homework. He, he knows Ooh, that Foxy in a row. loves the throw. Goes for another one. Excellent throw tech, but Foxy's gonna get the knockdown. Of course, the second the hat connects, it will reappear on Kung Lao's head. Nice low, that's gonna be a full launch. That low does only launch in the corner. Oh, Foxy getting tagged. I'm not sure what he was going for there, but now he's in a bad situation. Oh, down four's gonna be plus. The jump back, the scout is gonna be correct, but no combo. There's the 4-4, four four. that's gonna be round number two. And oh, Foxy. So beautiful for Foxy just to walk under. He's so good at doing that in every game I see him in. He's so good at going under jump ins and pressuring you the other way. Oh my god. So many. I mean, those jump back dive kicks, they are very unsafe, but it's just the reads from Foxy. So convinced on when Cusco's going to press Ooh. a button. What a conversion, too, by Cusco. He uses the end with the leg uh, drop to get back to the corner. And now Spin doing some damage. Foxy doesn't have a breaker just yet. Oh, down one. It's going to be great for Sonya, giving us some pressure. Cancelling the military stance, knowing without the spin oh. to interrupt, it's so much more of a playground for Sonya in those cover up pressure situations. And this actually could be the game, I think. He's got the bar to end it. Yeah, the EX, the EX legs are so much damage. He actually does it. Oh. And you rarely see that string finish. But when <laughs> it really does, do. everyone eats it. Cusco on the board, one to one. America versus e versus uh, UK right here, which is what's on the commentary. Guys, where are my Americans at? Oh, don't do this. Where are they at? 
Well, you know what? Foxy's not going to mind. Cause you know what? He spent three years being public enemy number one. He doesn't care. <laughs> Actually, a combo breaker champion of his own right in Mortal Kombat X. We'll never forget Hayate versus Foxy. That was an incredible grand oh, finals back in the day. So Different matchup. And actually, speaking of matchups, I think this is, might be when he does change to Melina. Yeah, he is actually going to change to Melina for this matchup. This, this, you know, think about this before the match even happened. Uh, picturing it, I saw Melina as a better option against Covert Ops because Covert Ops loves to be uh, aerial, uh, very active, and Melina shuts down movement better than anyone in this game, I think. Yeah, I mean, if you leave the ground, you're going to get ball rolled. You know, if you leave the ground at any point, you're just going to get anti head for free. She isn't one of those characters that has what seems to be like a, a meterless wake up attack because the ball roll is so low and so fast. If you overextend and you're not meaty, she will ball roll you on wake up and you will eat a full combo for your troubles. And there's the back one to hit confirm, piercing Melina. This was the variation that Foxy really invented by the end of Mortal Kombat X. And has a little bit better zoning as well and, and the teleport, which at any time, the sniper, you saw there, even the full screen jumps, he could snipe with those teleports. Now, an instant scour by Foxy, really trying to challenge Cusco and saying, you're not going to be able to just go for the uh, military stance willy nilly. I'm going to try and ball roll it. Oh, he confirmed the back one too. Strain is a little bit different these days, though. It used to be a mid, but not anymore. That's another confirmed full combo. We're going to the corner here. Ooh. Oh, my word. Good catch. That would just be a meteor right there, which is so scary against Melina player because it's always the threat of a wake up that. Oh, he tries to so ball scary. roll, but a bit too far away. He's uh, not going to trip guard. Instead, he's actually going to go for the empty jump block and punish him. And perfectly got the kill. Kuzco now with a commanding lead. He's up, uh, up around and has him in the corner, which is perfect. And actually got whiff punished. And Foxy's just been throwing out that string because it will catch limbs left and right. It will indeed. Goes for a forward dash. I think not really expecting Kuzco to press the button. Tries to interrupt as well, but there's the overhead. Overhead is slower, but it still will catch you if you're sleeping. Oh, more mids. I wonder what Foxy tried to do on wake up there. I've also loved Kuzco. Kuzco's recognition and pressure of when a down three hits and is blocked. Right there, he blocked after the down three, recognizing that, that uh, it didn't hit. And every time it's hit, immediately in the pressure. Gotta watch out in this neutral fox. He can't really afford to take these trades. Yeah, Kuzco. He can afford to take some of these uh, ring toss trades. But still being the one that wants to press the advantage. Foxy challenging up the back one too, expecting him to sit there and block, and he did manage to do it. One and, more hit confirmed. And we, we've seen a couple of times where Foxy has tried to interrupt the gap with buttons. Kuzco can try to play the mind game of if he's gonna go for the low mid screen, even though he's not gonna get a lot of damage off it, but just to try to keep him guessing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is a super even match right now. I think it's going to come down to that one significant hit that we're likely going to see any minute. 20 seconds on the clock. This might even be a timeout if these guys are super careful for the rest of the round. Tries to whip punish the dive kick. I think he was a bit antsy to try and whip punish with the ball roll without hit confirming. He had a bar to break. Oh my goodness, that's the health lead and the low profile. The throw is going to put him in kill kick territory. Now Kuzco taking a 2 1 lead on a Foxy Grandpa. Looking really good. And we're actually seeing the changes that happened to Molina like, by the end of the game. The fact that back one is no longer a mid, it's a high. So, loads of those situations where Foxy was expecting Kuzco to press the button, and he was, because it's a high, it was losing to those low pokes, which was a good call out from Kuzco. Yeah, not really four. fearing it anymore. That down four at the end was perfect. And, yeah. and, and, and there we go again. And then utilizing the hit stun to take his turn and uh, apply some mix. This has been the Kuzco recipe for success right now. Absolutely. And it's so risky to try and do anything about those command grabs. The command grab used to be a lot riskier back when armor wasn't as dangerous. Or was more dangerous, I think is a better term. But and now armor's not as scary. It, it's not as risky to go for the gap with the PND coming out of Foxy. Oh, there we go. Finally get an anti-air and it's going to be some major hit stun in this corner. All right, what's the mix up? Yeah, expecting maybe a grab attempt. That's why we saw the forward one right there. The best string in the game for chewing up grabs. Very hit confirmable as well. Then reset, and that's what's great about piercing lane to have that low side to go underneath other projectiles. And again, just going for the back one, but the down three beating it. Oh no, he wants oh, the kill! Mix up into the 50-50. Excellent decision from Cusco. Meter burn grab, really dangerous. So really putting a nail in the coffin for one more mix up. Something that we don't get to see very often in this game at all. We've seen block breakers and EX throws. Oh my goodness. We're playing some Mortal Kombat today, ladies and gentlemen. Optimization, folks. Optimizations. This is actually going to be match point for Cusco. He's looking really good. You know, you said yourself, this guy never stopped playing MKX. I think the results are starting to speak for themselves. You know, I think it's really showing why the effort is worthwhile, especially if there's a tournament as big as Combo Breaker coming up. But let's not count out Foxy just yet. He has a bit of a mountain to climb right now, but definitely possible. It's done here. Foxy holding onto a lot of bar as well, which is, okay, recipes for success that I see from Foxy uh, with Melina is that she doesn't require meter to do the damage, and in a decisive round, if you get anyone below half health, 
any hit, any hit into X-Ray is going to get the win. Yep, and Foxy's going to go and, for the ball and roll. That's there. where we're at right now. But the, the ball roll, I think, was a good decision there because he's one hit away from death. Even if he sat there unblocked, he was dead anyway. Oh, more hit confirmed. So all Foxy wants right now is just to get Cusco down, uh, load up on health to get any kind of confirmed. But he actually used it differently than I thought. He actually used it to take the risk. Yeah, for sure. I mean, sometimes either save it for the big payout, or in his situation, he was going to take a massive risk and then use the meter to really bail him out. Unfortunately, he didn't hit confirm that back one too, so Cusco still has his hands on the wheel. And he's got him in the corner. There's the low. Foxy probably expecting overhead. Foxy's already come up four bars on meter. Now he's left with none. Oh, no. And takes the risk. And Cusco going to get some massive damage into the corner. Not going to get the kill, but one more mix away. Oh, my God. Crouching the grab. Good read, but... Needs a couple more great decisions. This could be one more mix-up. Oh, he bets it on the overhead. <gasps> that was pre-patched. That was going to work. Punishes the car wheel. Is he going to build a breaker? He is. One more hit, folks. And this game's going to be it. Oh, the dive kick. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. <laughs> Taking the minus frames and Cusco moving on against Foxy. Really, really well played. And up until the last minute, that was uh, down to the wire, mate. That was down to the wire. Cusco going to move on to face Tekken Master. And we're gonna move on down to the bottom of the loser side. It's gonna be Waz versus Damaja coming all the way uh, through the loser side of the bracket. Um, had a had really good couple of wins, uh, and we'll get into that once the match starts. Uh, Damaja, a guy that's you know been online a lot, and the guy like we talked about, like rewinds, uh, playing in some of the combat cups that happen online, and uh, of course the, uh, the the MKX online events, and make make name for himself that way. Come here offline, already a top eight. That's gonna be huge. I'm actually gonna keep my eyes on Waz, but while we get this match underway, we're gonna go for a very quick break. Don't go anywhere, because. We're not going to go for a break just yet. I just got informed. We've, uh, we've changed our mind. Absolutely. You're back. You're back. On, the, on, the, on the fly. Back. We are. All right, so. What are we talking about? Uh, oh, yeah, Waz. Yeah. Waz is from Australia. He is from Australia. Oi, oi, oi. Oh, my God. Uh, no. You know, you're the second my, my you're, the, you're the second American in a week to make that reference. And that was at a different tournament that wasn't even fighting game related. <laughs> <laughs> but on all serious oi, note, Waz is one of those players that comes from a very small community in Australia. The guys have a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of passion. Um, they do, and they, they love playing the game, right? That's the ultimate thing is they love the game. Let me tell you, being someone who's who's in a lot of streams, I see so many Australians watching North American events at unholy hours in Australia. They stay up in groups and watch North American events, and it's so amazing. And uh, they're, they're very supportive of the scene. Uh, they reach out a lot. Waz was giving gifts out to everyone from Australia, trying to get us to try different treats and stuff. Um, they had everyone try Vegemite at Evo, and it was an interesting experience, <laughs> if you remember that. Uh, but yeah, just a great scene down there, very dedicated, and uh, shouts to them for coming. Yeah, I think the guys are going to be happy to see one of their boys in top eight as well. Even getting this far in itself is an accomplishment, especially at a tournament as stacked as this one. You know, and almost any single top Mortal Kombat X player was in attendance for this event. I know, you know this is the kind of classic case where loads of guys, they're playing Injustice 2 because this is the Pro Series and everyone's going to be a bit rusty. But there are some players, like you know we just saw Cusco, that's been playing the entire time. So when tournament season happens, these guys are actually the most dangerous players in the entire tournament because they're prime. These guys never left. And now they have the advantage in this situation. I know I ran into people that still played the game, and that's why I was out of the tournament. Now, I got double eliminated. I got double eliminated by Molina, mate. Oh, My God. least favorite matchup, and I fought it twice, three times. I beat one, but I lost to two. I just couldn't catch a break. Speaking of Molina, we're about to see another one. Damaja, a very good Molina himself. You're gonna see a very different play style than Foxy. That's what I noticed yesterday. Is he plays so differently? There's a lot of lot of micro decisions that he makes, and I can't wait to see what he's gonna do against Waz here. Who we're gonna see another Swarm Queen Devora. She has a lot of tools. I think the thing about Molina is that she has a lot of tools like challenge, run, cancel characters. So if you're gonna be playing against Swarm Queen, you have to make sure as the Swarm Queen player that your execution is on point. Because if she tags you with anything, obviously the stamina changes the game had by the end, where if you get caught while running or sprinting, which you're gonna be doing if you're gonna be run canceling things, you lose your entire stamina bar. Or so if you get opened up, you can't break. Or against Molina especially, if you run into that, was it forward one, two? Uh, if you instant run into uh, any button, you've already lost your stamina and you're gonna eat a full combo. Even if you have a breaker, ain't gonna happen. All right, so the guy's currently setting up their devices, I think. So we're going to uh, basically uh, sit tight for a few minutes. But I'm going to ask you, actually, at command, yep. while we sort of wait for this match to get underway, of all the players in this top eight, who do you favor the most to take it? I think this could be Rewind's tournament. I feel like it really could be. The way that... Okay, so I, ha I had a different mindset last night than I do right now. The way that Killer's playing right now, I would be frightened to play that man on paper, but Rewind does have the skill necessary to win any tournament 
in, in any game that I've seen him commit to, uh, especially in Justice 2 in, in here in MKX, um, he's, he's just one of those guys that I think is next in line uh, to ascend in the NRS scene and, and, and you know, take the mantle of being at the, at, the, at the top, top of the game. Well, even, you know, even the likes of Sonic Fox has said publicly uh, that when it comes to like, Injustice 2, if there's one player that could become the best Injustice player, Rewind is that is that player because he's got the young man reactions he's you know hungry to play hungry to compete but he's kind of fallen victim to tournament nerves yes. in a lot of major tournaments that's been the i think the only thing holding him back uh because the skill is there the time put in is there i mean he trains with sonic fox and he knows the methods i think that puts the time in he plays every single character in the game at the highest possible level it's kind of insane i don't know how he does it he's got plenty of time uh, yeah, that, that young man schedule. Yeah, that's that, that's that young man schedule of uh, just getting home and grinding. Uh, but I'm going to get back to these two right here because if you guys got to tune in to Mortal Kombat X yesterday, right before Top 8 was set, why well, is this match with Katana Prime? I heard it was very good. <laughs> was 3-2 down to the actual last hit. It was insane and uh, a heartbreaker for KP. Uh, but Waz moving on and representing uh, a plethora of internationals here in the top eight. So shout-outs to him and Dimaja with a win. 3-1 uh, over Camus Black, who caused so many upsets in that bracket. It was it was insane. So shout-outs to him as well for getting very far. And like I said, guys that have been hanging on to MK, making a name for themselves, even after the game, uh, isn't in its, you know, full cycle. I think loads of us miss Mortal Kombat, man. I mean, so many of us, like, you know, we had the celebration of MK9 yesterday. The MK9 was the, the, the game that really started it for so many of us. Yes. I mean, us included, right? Uh, yeah. um, I, was in the, I was in the front row, just, yeah! Yeah, yeah well, exactly. But the, the fact that, like, MKX was kind of like that next step in competitive Mortal Kombat, and MKX had so many new mechanics, had so many characters. Personally, the variation system was what really put things over the top for me. Like, as someone who really loves relishing training mode and exploring things and finding new tech and stuff like that, I think MKX really was the ultimate in that because even a year Absolutely. later there were variations that no one really knew anything about So you could just lose yourself in like a few hours in training mode just learning a variation if And then when you see it on tournament you kind of just have the knowledge ready to watch it If it was still played at every single tournament people would still be finding stuff right now I think I agree uh, You have so many variations there's how many matchups you have to actually learn is what was insane about Mortal Kombat. I mean, there's cl if, you were to, if you were to factor a variation as its own character, which you should do because the variations do drastically change characters, there are close to 100 characters in this game. Food for thought, ladies and gentlemen. That's just nutty, isn't it? It's mad. But, but sounds like we're almost good to go. And there's also uh, Mortal Kombat just in general. As a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a viewer, all of you guys, it's very fast. It's very brutal. It's, and and that's what keeps viewers uh, engaged, I think. It's the best bit. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's the best bit. It's just Brutality, my dudes. It, it comes at you. All right. So, uh, oh. Here we go. Here we go. We're back in. Oh, baby. Well, we have Sky Temple, so I'm assuming these guys are going to change stage anyway. Absolutely. For those that might be wondering, the, uh, Sky Temple is one of those stages that there's so much getting in the way, players don't like playing on it. Kind of reminds me of almost like, you know, we had uh, the streets, uh, to an element actually, we had uh, the subway as well in MK9, the streets where things actually kind of obstruct the front of the screen. That actually, that stage came up uh, with Dizzy, and I forgot Dizzy was playing, but they immediately rectified that situation and switched stages. Uh, because, yeah, it's very it's very distracting, and uh, the subway you know, even slows the game down a little bit when it becomes active. Yep, and then we look at, in MKX, we look at a stage like the Sky Temple, where it's a really pretty stage, 100%. Oh, it's gorgeous. But... You know, obviously there's flashes of lightning, there's constant rain, the stage is darker than most stages, and I think Bunch. it was about halfway oh. through the game's lifespan that the community kind of decided to, let's kind of just go for, uh, let's just ban Sky Temple, yeah. right? If we go on the stage, let's just re-random, because stages do make a difference, because I mean, it's obviously the, the size of the stages. Let's also be serious, Netherrealm was not sneaky in making a 50-50 stage select, 70% chance of getting the pit anyway. Yep. <laughs> I agree. Hey man, that's my favorite stage. Do you know what I mean, as someone who likes corner escapes, I'm a big fan of the pit. Yeah, that's what was gorgeous. Is it, was, it was very. I wish I had the pit when I still played Quan Chi. <laughs> then I'd have been. Actually, you know what? Then, then people would have been, been able to get out on my sorcerer stuff. So now, actually, no, the pit can stay gone. I, I'll, I'll tell you, playing against the Quan Chi on that stage was one of the worst feelings I've had as a competitor. Of uh, as a Quan Chi player, it was one of the best feelings ever. <laughs> to be honest with you. Do you know what it's like to corner Michelangelo to get that every time? I know what it's like to do 90% chip death. It's so fun. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> I loved it. Every second of it. it looks like these no guys, regrets. It looks like these guys are getting warmed up. I think so. The buttons, the buttons working. Controllers the getting connected properly. PlayStation 4 is working, Little hopefully. Fingers crossed there. Okay, so we're going to be sitting tight while the guys are... I'm assuming they're going through their pads again. They might have had to go for a console reset, I think. But uh, I believe we're going to be good to go. Thanks for being patient with us, guys. Sorry for the delay, but we'll be back into this match as soon as physically possible. We're getting well underway in this top eight bracket. 
yes we are on the winner's side if you guys are just now tuning in anything like that we've got rewind versus killer zinnok on in winner's finals and here on the loser side of the bracket we've, we've already had one match happen and that was uh cusco going up against foxy 3-1 in his favor cusco going to move on to face tekken master and here on the bottom side of the losers last versus the maja match finally getting ready to go and like I said, no matter what, it's not a real 50-50. 60% 50 -50. of the time, it gets the pit every time. I mean, I like those odds, my friend. I like those odds because I like the pit. That wasn't sneaky, Paulo. I see you. Round one. <laughs> oh, my God. I just realized he's sitting right next to us. Oh, my word. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. This is, this is, that, this is well, a button check. That was check. the hypest reaction to a button check I've ever seen. I thought we started out with a whip punish like that. <laughs> Maybe next time. Maybe when they restart match and, and then they'll do it again. And then you can, you can celebrate for a second time. But I think they're good to go. This is the, this, like I said, I'm really curious what we're going to see differently out of Dimash's piercing than out of Foxy's. And of course with Waz, what we're going to see differently out of Tekken Master's uh, Swarm Queen as well. The thing about Melina is that she's one of those characters that has so many tools, she can open up to those different playstyles. You can play really slow, really reserved, or you can play like a complete nutcase, and that works too. But against Devora, it's going to be a battle of the mids. That's one of the danger things. Actually, the matchup is a little bit different now. The back one, too, for Melina isn't a mid anymore. Devora, she has got the edge in that. Oh yeah, the pressure. It be surrounded and it blows up the gap. Very good by Dimasha. And what's great about even coming off the bar like that is the reversal of the position when her back is to the corner like that. Yeah, he doesn't get a full combo anymore, but he's still gonna be happy to get out of the corner. It's gonna force Waz to really run in. And there's that forward two, full hit confirm. Forcing the break out of Waz. And again, when the combo breaker happens, you lose all your stamina. So if you're a run cancel character, you kind of get stopped in your tracks for a few seconds. Oh, Ooh. overhead, raw overhead. We're already seeing a little more risk on both these guys in comparison to like a, a, a tech master with Foxy. Uh, just different strings being utilized. What word? That, that, oh my god, that was a straight up mash. He almost built the second bar to launch too. Ron cancels, he's gonna sit there. Yep, expecting some sort of ball interruption, I think Waz. Wise to it. Staggering carefully, but there's a hit confirm. There's the insect grenade. This could be the round he's oh, yeah, this bar. is gonna be some damage. Oh my god, the pain. The pain. And armor yeah. or not, you're gonna die right there. Either from chip or uh, from taking the hit with meter on, or with, with, with armor on. You'll absorb the hit, but you won't save yourself from the damage. <gasps> wow. That was some balls on the box right there. Just a swing in the middle of the cancel. Oh, nice. back dash, and that was so close to getting whip punished himself. Really good call-outs by Dimaja so far in this round to, to get the lead. Brave stuff, not afraid. Now he's the corner positioning Waz, probably expecting some sort of stagger. That forward one with Melina, such a magical string for Beating those grab attempts. Oh, the four and three. The one million frame overhead. You are so much it's so hard to block, I swear to God. It's so slow, but it's something you you, you don't think will ever come. Oh, very good zone right, right to Maja. Good trade for Waz. Gonna get the knockdown situation, not necessarily the damage. Yeah, he's not gonna go for 2 1 2 against Melina. That's a death sentence. Especially a fully loaded oh. here with three bars. Both of these guys, full sticks to put our two X rays on deck. And Tavora, one of the best reactionary X rays in the game. Damaja not going to come up the second bar. Wants to build an X ray if he can get the damage to go for a, a kill without worrying about anything. Goes for a jump in, but it's not prepared for the string. Oh, oh my god, the, that was so brave. But you got to watch out, actually. Molina's in one of those situations now where you can go for it and it's expensive, but it's 50 50 town with the meter burn ball roll, and then you extend it for a second bar to launch. Good break. Now Waz, if he gets one clean opening, this could be the round. Oh my god, the down three challenges. Low buttons are really good at stopping approaches of these lengthy normals. Very good. And, and oh then, and then you actually get the advantage. Waz coming up. Oh, the bar, beautiful anti-air, and that's going to be the kill. And there it is. That back one anti-air. That sort of max range. We're so used to jumping from that distance because it's safe, but not against piercing. She has a almost half screen anti-air that leads to huge damage and hits done on the ground, takes away the wake-up game. That's why you give the lady the size, my friend. You want the increased range. Just showing why the variation system has such a, a difference in the game, I think. You know, if this was Melina with any of the other variations, it wouldn't be the matchup that you're seeing right now. Not even close. And there's the anti-air again, going for one too many back ones. You can get three, but it's tight execution. Now Waz, big boy damage. On oh, the run cancel just for the finesse. 44 damage. That's a pretty good day at the office right there. To, to oh. my territory, didn't watch out for the roll though. I respect it. He had no choice. I mean, he was going to die anyway. Just go for the roll. If it works, it works. Plus on here. Goes in for the low. That should be guaranteed. Death. No! Expect the back one too. This could be a full life comeback. There's no break for Waz just yet. What's the read? Are we going to get risky? Oh my god! I respect it. 
I respect it. I was, I was, I was about to be like, are we finally getting a teleport read here? E EX? Which would have worked on the neutral jump punch, but... He, he took risk in other ways. We see the down three connect again. That down three, such an amazing button at setting up that forward one pressure from Devora. Couple of sides here, yeah. but that, that's, that nice jump allows Blast. They've kind of built the pressure. He finally comes off the second bar for the launcher. I think Damage is content taking the trade of bar. I think when they both have no meter, he likes his odds as piercing. He's just playing that solid, strong footsie game. I like how when his pressure... Oh. How he's changing things, things up is if he's going to throw the side or not. And then if he doesn't throw the side, and someone's respecting that, he takes his turn again. Oh my god! Goes for the delayed overhead, but Damager going in swinging. Lena has some amazing low pokes as well, so to be honest with you, you can get away with mashing in some instances. Oh! Nice confirm, plus frames. The read, but no punish on the grab. A little bit too late. Oh! Oh, that's. I'd say that's a good hit stun right there. <gasps> yeah, he's out to break. Alright, so if, he go, if we do go into a round three, which we might not, he has no stamina though, oh but there's the reset! Waz should take this game now. There we go, Waz! Fighting hard for that one. I was prepared for that to go into a round three, but not quite. It's gonna be one one. That was incredibly Indeed. clutch, especially when you're looking at the resources that Dimash had. It was getting kind of scary there. But hanging on, and we're all tied up in one one. This is a good one right here. We're gonna see what the stage. Oh, is it gonna be <laughs> the pit? Oh. Was in, the pit was in random again, by the way. <laughs> Just uh, to kind of go towards your theory about odds. It'll happen again. Don't worry. I have no doubt about it. But we're going on to a different stage now. And this stage is actually kind of interesting. There's not much going on in the mid-screen. It's almost entirely built around corner once again. Yeah, there's, there's that skull and that's pretty much about it. Not as much corner escapes. Nowhere near the level of the pit. The pit, a very symmetrical stage, but this one's entirely different. But just aggressive, relentless pressure. Waz scouting out the ball roll and a break from Damager. Brave actually to be this low on life and then still use all of your resources to try and survive. Against Devorah as well, this oppressive character. I was actually going to call out early in the last game uh, because every time Dimash is back into the corner, he rolled out almost every single time and it worked. And I'm waiting for Waz to actually make the read and wait it out. And he actually already did early on in this game. Round two. Uh, up around, and that is some momentum in his favor. Putting out some big buttons if Dimash decided to press the button. Taking the minus frame to the down three. Devorah, if you're going to be a run council character, really waiting for those low pokes and taking your turn to start pressing the advantage. Always a good option. Yeah, damage is going to build a bar of meter now. This next bit, anything on block or whiff is going to build him some bar. So there we go. He can now be a bit more brave. He's going to save his breaker, I think. Oh, oh my god. Tries to go for repositioning, but a little bit mistimed. Oh, the train. My word. And still holding on to three bars of meter. And it's going to force the breaker right here. Unbreakable. I oh. like it. He's still confident. Oh, goes for the raw low. Patience. The now, grab again. Now, Waz, this is his round to lose at this point. Oh, this is shit. Oh, he actually could have just done the no break. No block break. I was about to say, he actually could have just done the, the, uh, the technical strike. He said he went kind of swaggy, just going for the cancel. Uh, but you're right. Block breaker, I mean, it's something that I don't think anyone even has in their arsenal. I mean, Tekken, Ma Tekken Master using it as a block breaker was the first time I've seen block breaker used in like two years. Kind so, of mind blowing. Uh, yeah. All right. Instant confirmation there from Waz. And here comes the big boy damage for another time. Drops the combo, but at that point, he's already done close to 40%. He is going to lose setup though, which is actually in this game very important. Oh, the read, he's not afraid. There's a couple of times where he's almost got that teleport with a stand one. And we're seeing the jump in kick now, because it has more priority than jump in punches. I like that adaptation from Waz. He wants the knockdown rather than setup. More damage. Damager in a bad spot. Oh my god, just trying to disrespect. I respect it. If he was blocking, he was dead anyway. He needs to get out of this corner, and he has to right now, because this is match point for Waz. And if he was blocking, he all he would have done was give Waz a little bit more uh, bar of meter. And not going to break here. He is holding on to this meter for a very long time here, Ketchup. Waz not 100% on his execution, but he needs to make sure he lands these combos, whiffing a couple of air grabs to build the bar. No stamina, so he's going to have to take that forward one string as is. Down three to get the plus frames. That's going to be a hit confirm. Probably the easiest one that Munga does possess. And yep. here's, here's some plus frames in the corner for Dimaggio. What's he going to do with it? Gets the throw. I like it. We have to respect that. You have to show Molina a lot of respect right there. That's going to put the fear in Waz, I think, knowing that he's not afraid to go for those grabs. If he gets restood by that back one-two string again, he's going to be thinking about it. Oh, overhead. Wake up back one, he's confident. Oh, the down two whiffs goes for it a little bit too late. And I don't think Waz is going to take that break. He's going to want to keep the resources going into this final round. Final round of the game, both have two bars of meter. We've seen this before. We haven't seen a single x-ray, which is kind of shocking at this point. 
Spike damage here. He's trying to really, he's trying to disrespect off those forward one strings, and you just can't. That's why Waz is actually going for the low, because it's so fast on startup. The all staggers the forward one, he presses buttons, and he has no bar to break. Waz is in control again. It's gonna be a mean 44% and a knockdown. It does get the, the wake up roll, but yep. all it did was reverse the position. It was only a matter of time before he eventually pulls the trigger on that armor, but it might have been too late. Look at how much life he has to make up for. The down three, plus, it's gonna be all of it plus on hit. Scary situation right now. Waz, anything off block into the EX Tentacle Strike should actually chip out. Yep. And that's why Waz isn't overextending. Wood punishes the back one. He's wise to it, and he runs in for the armor. Waz is going to move on in the bracket. Are we going to see a brutality? Oh, yes, we yeah. are. Why not? Waz coming all the way from Australia, moving on in this loser's bracket, and he is in a great situation now. Oh, yeah, he's excited here. Making the long uh, dis distance travel. Doing well so far here in this top eight. Represent the uh, entire the, the entire Australian scene is on his back. They're probably in the chat going absolutely nuts right it now. It actually makes me really proud to see because small communities from around the world, particularly in their own games, these guys don't get the option to travel. You know, they don't have the availability. The sponsors aren't there. Um, there's not as much, I guess, money around these parts of the world to send these players to these major tournaments. Exactly. And that means that when you inevitably have your chance to play and get this experience. You're kind of getting just thrown in at the deep end. You, know, you have locals in your part of the world, but nothing can ever p prepare you for this until you're here. So the fact that he's got top eight at his first MKX major tournament in a very, very long time, particularly in America, and he's moving on in this loser's bracket, very impressive stuff indeed. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get to see a little bit more of him later on as we're going to move on to Tekken Master versus Cusco. This is going to be a good one. Both guys looking incredibly crisp Three in this generation. game. Curious who Tekken Master is going to go with like, against the mobility. Uh, of, of Covert Ops, and the fact that I don't, I don't think Switch. that Tekken Master is going to want Covert Ops right next to him, so I don't, th I don't know if he's going to go with Devor in this one. He, he, he might go Shinnok itself. and say, stay away from me. But you also Mortal have to think, I, I think if we would like to see one character in this matchup Mortal from Tekken Master, I think it's actually going to be Shinnok, because if you're going up against Covert Ops Sonya, he's going to have the Hell Spark zoning, which exactly. historically has been very, very powerful versus Sonya in MKX. But also, Shinnok has Mortal some of the best armor itself. in the game, because he's going to be building He's going to be building constant meter, going in for those Hell Sparks and all of his block pressure, but then the second Sonya closes in the space and goes for the Covert Ops strings that have punishable gaps. Now Shinnok is going to have an armored reversal that leads to a full combo and an imposter restand. Exactly. And it, it's, that's, I, I think that's what it comes down to because like, with Devora, again, the, Devora's game plan is being up in your face. And I think that's where Covert Ops excels. And, and <laughs> even against a character like Devora, again, who is very overwhelming. I mean, you, you see how Cusco plays. If he sees one down three hit, it's mix time. Now we're going to go in for a button check real quick, and that makes more than enough sense. Hopefully these guys get a stage they can be happy with. Yeah, it's one or two. No Sky Temple here, so we're going to be in good shape. Actually, going to have a look at the variation. Yeah, he's gone in for Imposter. Um, Palmy was thinking, would we actually see Bone Shaper get picked? Because I know yeah. he, he, the Instant Air Tricky oh, uh, Portal was yeah. really dangerous. A yeah. little bit of better zoning. Shaper, yeah, yeah that, that's exactly what I was going to talk about. The zoning from Bone Shaper is super strong, particularly when stamina was adjusted the way it was. Not that the stamina change really affected Sonya too much, because she's not a run cancel character, and a lot of her mobility tools come from special moves that get her in without having to use resources. That said, I do think Shinnok is a really good pick for this matchup. Now, I'm curious if I'm going to see the Miracle Dive Kick. There's one sweet spot where she can't dive kick through Hell Sparks. You don't see it very often. <laughs> there is a fine but, but, but line. But it does exist. Yeah, Shinnok. Instant Air Tricky Portal. It's really easy to do on pad, actually. It's some sort of trick involving both of the movement options of both your D-pad and your analog stick. Tekken Master catching the low. He's going to get a full confirm here. Yeah, there's the break from Cusco. Does not want to deal with the imposter situation. And instant down two reactions. She has got one of the best down twos, but that's why we saw a tricky portal. And there's the raw overhead. What's the mix-up? Yep, just going in for the meaty. And now he's going to be happy just having that corner pressure with Hell Sparks. Down four Hell Sparks. Deceivingly hard to actually deal with. And he's going to get rid of the legs. There we go. And that adds on so much damage. On top of the damage boost he's already getting. Yeah. It's a double damage boost after the last patch. For those that may be wondering, whenever Imposter actually gets that restand situation, yeah, she does get a temporary damage boost as well. So just the icing on the cake, really. Wake up, Hell Sparks. What are you doing coming in? If there's space in between Shinnok and his opponent, that's actually not a bad option at all. And that's a guaranteed 16% grab. If, if that's Taking that grab off restand is so brave to do. The grab may as well be guaranteed damage off the end of that restand. It, 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 it's, it's a sad day at the office when you're like, you know what? 16% is the best I'm going to... Eating 16% is the best I'm going to get right now. It's the lesser of two evils. 
Ooh, good stagger there by Kuzco. Take much to call it out. Shinnok has a really good backdash. Eats the overhead. That's going to be a full confirm. And Tekken Master doesn't have the bar to break this. Kuzco could have got a run under. And, oh, he's just, I think he's keeping it simple right now. Just trying Ooh. to get back in the match. EX Arc kick got a trade. That's actually a really good trade for Tekken Master because he spent nothing on that. Oh. Yep, taking the plus frames on that standing normal. Meter burn for more. And the Arc kick brave stuff. That could have been a back to back health box if it would have worked. But down one. Just take the guarantee. Tekken Master is going to be up in game number one, and we can see why Shinnok is such a good pick for this matchup. I think Kuzco was praying he was going to armor and just kill him uh, outright damage, but very good patience by Tekken Master to know his options at that point and then take his turn to get the kill that way. Oh, and he is changing up the jump marks and teleports. Oh my God. Kuzco is someone that it's really hard to test his his reactions against teleports. Uh, look at his matches at against say like Link Tweety with uh, Possessed Kenshi, very teleport heavy character. Kuzco is very good at anti iron kills. There's another one of those grabs, but when he's got this much health, those grabs, they don't really add up yet. They will later, but he's going to take one mix-up off the uh, military stance. I think he's going to be taking the grab at this life. Oh, oh my god, the down two. That's a really good option against two of the options off of military stance, I mean, especially with, screen. with one of the fastest down twos in the game. Wasn't it like seven frames or something? And it is massive. Really good backdash. Oh my goodness, Kuzco not committed. One of the few times he hasn't committed off mix. It's actually uncharacteristic of Cusco to not confirm that. Yeah, the thing is, the meter burn on Hell Sparks is so effective and so dangerous that Shinnok, if he has loads of space, can sometimes afford not to meter burn the Hell Sparks because if you're waiting for it, there's no punish because you're sitting there blocking anyway. And then he just built so much more meter and he got away with murder. Indeed. And Hell Sparks a significant amount. Yeah, just whiffing the legs just to make sure he gets the restand and he lands an opening. And and about Shinnok. Just like that. Yep. Oh, gets the jump in, but a bit too far away. No strings to connect here. And there is no gap in down for health sparks. Look like Kuzco trying to press the button there. It's such an annoying poke. It's down for health sparks. Running down three, I like it. Take the plus frames. There's the overhead. I'm not sure about ending the combo on that though. You're actually sending Shinnok exactly to where he wants to be on the screen. And there's that reversal, the advancing mid. I really to punish. I like what Kuzco did. He changed things up but after knockdown of Tekken Master though, which was he walked into almost start with Hellspark range, stayed out of it, and sent his projectile, which actually caught him waking up Hellspark and beat him out. Now, we're unlikely to see a tricky ball from uh, Tekken Master in this situation because he doesn't want to put his back to oh! the Wonderful trade! They're still full screen and Kuzco still in a horrific position. Now, we say that's an amazing trade for Tekken Master because if you get hit by that interactable, that's a full combo! And he ate a lot of damage before that breaker. Kuzco really only... He's one oh, way to walk up throw! Is that brutality? Come on, please be. Oh. Oh. Normally it does, but not then. But that was actually a really good decision for Tekken Master. She, she like has some of the most disrespectful uh, specials and uh, just buttons in the game in general. I mean, he, he, he stops on your face, his throw is a backhand. His x-ray is a backhand his that breaks your skull. So disrespectful, this man. But that walk into grab was actually really smart because Shinnok commands so much respect in the neutral because of how much health sparks take up the screen that run and grab, in a lot of cases, is the last thing you actually expect from him. He does a really fast uh, forward run. Yep, it's, it's the it's same way. Run, it's a glide. The same way Kenshi will get away with something similar because you're waiting for specials. But Shinnok, I think, is the ultimate example in that. Kuzco does land a clean opening, though. Yeah, the fear of health spark is it's, it's something that's very hard to get over. Yep. It's, especially with a character like Covert Ops, and, and you know, there's a lot of characters in the game that don't have projectiles, they have to go in. And that's really hard to deal with. Oh, this is a great round. Ooh. No bar to extend it, though. Oh, tries to go for what I think was the overhead right there, but Cusco, I just like the awareness of down three. Just get out of there. Feels bad when you do your teleport a little too instant? Yeah. <laughs> just uh, your execution was a bit too good right there. Kind of threw him off. Cusco in a good position, has it in the corner. And. That looked like some tech there. And whether he just got below or that was intentional. Going underneath looks like a pretty effective option, at least just for saving damage. Oh, there's the duck. Would have gone in for the restand there, so I respect the break. Even without bar, you don't want to get restood against Shinnok. Oh, Kuzco going for the interactable, didn't have the stamina, that's why he got that nice error message. Yep. Oh. Interactable.exe was not found. Knocked down, good situation here. This has been a wonderful game for Kuzco so far. No meter burn still from Tekken Master, just the raw overhead. Now, what is this mix up going to be? Is he going to bet on something a little bit bigger? Tricky portal, instant air tricky portal just to get the plus frames. I love the staggers, but the patience from Cusco. Very smart stuff to just sit there and wait. Oh! <laughs> oh, punishable low! He bets the farm, but opts to get rid of the leg lift instead. I oh my god! Oh, gets up the command grab. I cannot believe, for one, that Tekken Master made the read that he was going for the low when he hasn't done it. 
at all today and mid screen of all places. Um, that's just fan uh, fantastic. And he got the read off the command grab off military no stance as well. But Cusco's on the board, has a little momentum. Tekken Master held on to a lot of bar uh, going in the second bar, thinking that he was going to. Uh, and he, but he didn't use it. That's what was uh, unfortunate. I was surprised to see break. Tekken Master at the end there opt to go for straight into the, the leg lift, pretty much, instead of going for health sparks first. I think he really wanted to have the threat of the restand and then block pressure after that. That must have been the decision. But personally, I'm not sure it was the right one. But he has a game to he has games to work with, right? That's his benefit of being up two games. He can make those little errors in judgment because he has games to basically burn at this point. Let's go drawing first blood here, getting some decent damage. We're going straight to the corner. And there is a gap in the meter burn shoulder into the actual launcher. But Cusco just waiting it out and letting Tekken Master spend all those resources. All right, now there's the stomp. Watch out for the meter, though. Yeah, delayed wake up. Cusco loves that delayed wake up. Tekken Master just been all over it. He loves walking up to his opponent on knockdown, just standing there. And then he'll wait a, a few seconds and then do something, whether it's pressure or he'll even try to teleport right there and catch Kuzco off guard. The meter burn throw, and Kuzco is going for the win of that round right there. He absolutely was. Tekken Master didn't actually break the meter burn grab, but I think it caught sight that when he fought Foxy, Kuzco went for the overhead there as well. So I think Tekken Master, a little bit of an adaptation from when he watched Foxy play earlier on. There's the reverse positioning on the grab. One more significant touch, and Tekken Master's going to be in a great position. Oh my god, empty jump. Ooh, all the patience. Oh no, he actually hit by the last one. That's easy to convert into the car wheel. And Kuzco almost stealing that round from Tekken Master. That's that military stance pressure. If you've not got bar, if you've not got a reversal, especially post patch cover ops, seems so dangerous because her options are many. Oh, very good use to get that cartwheel off, and now he's got a restand well, potential on the next hit. Not a lot of resources, though, but building that meter a uh, very fast. Uh, Shinnok, one of the meter-building machines of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, definitely. But I think because the block pressure that we see from Sony... Oh, I'm not sure that was intentional. Yeah, health sparks just stay safe. Good scout on the down, too. <gasps> and the scout on the back dash as well. Kuzco playing some amazing Mortal Kombat. He's warmed up here after going down 0-2 to Tekken Master. And we may be going to a game number five. Look at how loaded Kuzco is with meter. I'm loving the adaptation, but Kuzco is just playing so smart. Oh, the down two, Tekken Master. He's had enough of those delays. Oh, and, and I think Tekken Master baited the X-ray there on the, on the empty teleport. Oh, my God. He tries to jump kick to catch it, but he actually runs into it himself. Tekken Master still in a good situation, but watch out for the X-Ray. Oh my god, I think he was waiting for something along the lines of it, but it doesn't oh! come, and Kuzco gets a second game. Wow. And gives us a salute. We're going to a game number five here. Oh man, I'm so excited that we have some of these series that are going this close. I mean, there's so much on the line for this MKX tournament. It's been a long time since we had a major MKX event, period. Let alone a year since the last combo breaker, and Tekken Master being the reigning champion. He's thinking about it. Now, he Tekken really Master is. being a multi-character specialist, I think if there's one time he's going to change character, it's probably going to be now. He's getting caught in a lot of situations where he's got no bar. He's landing openings, but has no damage to really punish Cusco for the great decisions that Tekken Master is actually making. And yeah, you said, like I said, if, if there's a trick up his sleeve, now is the time. It looks like he's not going to do that, going right back into it with Shinnok. Shinnok was the character that won him the whole tournament last year. I believe this was the character that he used to defeat Sonic Fox with last year as well. I think it was Sector versus Shinnok was the matchup that we saw. Oh, oh that dive kick. About the approach, and see, Tekken Master, because he got caught running forward, didn't have a breaker, and if and if he would have used a breaker early, would have already eaten all the damage from the combo. That is the risk reward of actually running at your opponent in this game. Oh, being a little bit greedy, tries to run it. I love the attempt from Cusco. He was so confident that Tekken Master wasn't going to spend bar on those health sparks. Oh. A lot of big buzz. A lot of whiffs. Oh, and, and the, at the same time. The, 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 how bad does it feel when you hit by the last second meter burn on Hell Spark when you think it's over? Oh, the delayed low. But again, because he had no bar for Hell Sparks, he only just managed to meet burn it. It's match point for Tekken Master, but look at Cusco's resources. Three bars of meter. And, but for, for Covert Ops, all that really means is the threat of an X ray, because she doesn't really spend the bar for the damage. It's all meterless right here. I mean, she gets massive damage from the X ray anyway, right? I wouldn't be surprised he hasn't had to use any of it just yet. It's all meatless. There's the meter burn. Goes oh. in for the low. I love the reset. And Cusco is going to stay fully in control. And there's another setup here. Oh, oh just a my grab. goodness. That is a different mix-up that he's thrown up with Tekken Master. The entire set and a flawless victory. That's what happens when Sonya gets going. She goes mix-ups into mix-ups. And if you guess wrong every time, well, it's curtains for you.
And now double match point. We're down to the wire here. Mortal Kombat X and Combo Breaker. Oh, I'm so excited to see how this one goes. This is going to be a crazy matchup, but he catches the cartwheel. Corner repositioning as well. And I think if he's going to beat Shinnok, having him in the corner is the number one way to do it. He does meet a bonus health box. We're going to get set up here. What is the mix up? Oh, and he really good call out. Expects Kusto probably trying to take a grab or something. Hard reads, but not paying off. So we're doing it for the vine and the late teleport. He's gonna avoid the oh down two, God. and he went right to a jump kick, and Tekken Master is gonna take it three to two to advance here on the loser side of the bracket. Of all the things that I could come down to, a jump back itself. kick, I think, was the last thing I was expecting. But to be honest with you, Shinnok's super defensive. The health sparks, you have to make those big, bold plays. Cusco really wanted to get in and make that last hit count. Unfortunately, I love the spacing from Tekken Master. You know, he went for that jump back kick. If he presses a button running in, he's going to walk into those active frames. And that's exactly what Tekken Master wanted Cusco to do. But I've got to say, props to Cusco for getting this far in the tournament. It's been a while since we've seen him, and he's going to be proud of his results here. But Tekken Master, the reigning champion, is going to be moving on in this bracket. Yes, he is. And congratulations to him as we're going to move on to the other side. And it's going to be Scar Ooh, okay. going up against Waz. So, Scar and Waz, I'll be honest, I don't know who I favor in this matchup. One thing is that I think Scar is going to have, like many of these players, so when you have an international player like Waz, who plays in tournaments, but nothing on the scale of, you know, North American majors, which are, I mean, take a look around, right? This is an extreme situation to be in. This is the kind of thing that you can only get experience in until you've been on that chair, and you've been in front of this crowd, and, you know, you've been in that position. Absolutely. So Scar, he's been there, done that, worn the t-shirt a million times over. Oh yeah, he's, he's sitting there calm and collected and it's gonna be on Waz here to uh, not buckle under the pressure that's surmounting right in front of him. But so far, he's delivered and he's looked very uh, good doing it. So shout outs to him because this is a big stage. Everyone's watching from home. All his boys are watching. There's the added pressure of being the, the lone Australian, you know, the, the country's on his back. And Scar here, again, been there, done that, perfectly calm and collected. Curious who Scar's gonna go with in this matchup as well. Looks like, he's, looks like he's thinking smoke. He I agree is. with that. I, I think, you know, with, you actually have to look at how oppressive this character is. You know, Devorah, a very, very aggressive rushdown heavy. We've seen what Swarm Queen can do here. We've seen it in tournaments a million times over. The thing is, the invincible smoke away, I think, is going to be quite a tool to both. You can contest in the neutral with the mids and the mobility that smoke brings to the table. And the second you're put on the back foot or knocked down on wake up, you are going to have a really good reversal. I know smoke doesn't deal with pressure the best in the game, but you really can't turn your nose up at that meter burn smoke away. It's one of the best moves in the game. Yeah, so this is going to be similar to uh, what we saw on the winner side of Rewind versus Scar because Devorah, again, very far reaching mids. A very, very relentless pressure. A really big damage off as well. And once you get to the corner, um, Waz is going to have the ability to throw out the swarm and look for the smoke port and have a couple of options there. Now, that's not the first time today we've seen these combo drops coming out from Scar. So I, I'll be honest, I think there are elements of rust here. Because um, they're uncharacteristic combo drops from Scar. He doesn't normally drop these conversions. But he had the clutch at the very beginning, that anti-cross-up standing one. Triborg standing one is a phenomenal anti. And there's the patience. 1112 has got a gap, and Scar was waiting to see if Waz tried to challenge. Those plus rams there, and Waz respecting it, and in that respect, Scar getting the throw. It's gonna be the wake up here. Ooh. I think I think we're just sitting back and kind of scouting out to what Waz was gonna do. This is this is a real early match. This is the visual feeling out process in the corner. We go. And is Scar gonna wake up? Oh, the big drop on Waz though. That's not the first time he's dropped that either. We are seeing some elements of what could be tournament nerves, a little bit of shakiness. And there's the counter poke through that smoke away. Waz staying with the patience. Yeah, plus frames, not going for the anti cross up, waiting for the four, which didn't come. Interruption with the overpositor strike. Oh, the oh. down two! Waz coming to play. And this is where he's going to want Scar back to the corner this entire set. And there's the crouch. That's the tech right there. If you're a small hitbox character, you can crouch that one. Oh, there's that stand one coming into play. So good, leading to a reset. And this is going to force Waz to go for jump kick instead. Obviously, if you manage to beat a jump in with a jump kick, you're going to get way less damage because it's not a jump in punch into full combo. But there's the tech once again. Knowing he hasn't got the stamina, though, so he has to just go for the knockdown instead of the damage. And just the impressive bits. But Scar so good at just waiting it out, looking for his turn. More pressure. Staggers again. But it's going to be Scar's turn to press buttons, looking for the block normals. They're just Ooh. trading this back and forth, but the staggers from Waz are proving to be really effective. Here we go. Nice nice down. Down. Six bars of meter are on the screen right now. I actually boy. think that was a read on the uh, smoke. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh my word, that was insane. 
Fast reactions on the X-ray, but even faster reactions on the restart match. We're going into game number two. I think the entire crowd just got RKO'd out of nowhere. I'll be honest. I mean, I think we all jumped out of our seats. Woo! Wow. And before we know it, we're going straight into game two. Restart match. It's kind of nutty how fast they go. And there's the tech once again, but this time he's got the stamina to run cancel into full combo. And he's going for the damn damage rather than setting up the meaty. And ooh, nice cancel to the throw. Mixing things up well as well as so far. And there's that smoke away. Waz, I don't think he's gonna overextend on Wake Up because he knows if he whiffs too many and Scar goes for that smoke away, he's just gonna whiff punish him with a forward 1-3 into smoke bomb. Like, you don't wanna take a full combo just for whiffing a button. Ooh. And there we go, catching the down one. More pressure and a punish from Waz. Looking so strong here. Early on, and Scar holding that. And he, he, he didn't have the stamina to get out an instant run, which is what you wanna do with that situation uh, because he does have the advancing normal with a forward one. He can instant run forward one, probably get out of that situation. Oh my god, the tech. That was so good from Scar. Ooh, oh! Chase down the back dash, but if you put if you put on any other button, I think you would have caught it. Oh, it's so late. I, you know what? I don't think that's worked all top eight. Oh! No, the techs get off me! Oh, oh my. he risked it all! Oh. No, it's, it's round one. It's round one. It's round one. You've still got games left to go. But he had PTSD for the first round right there. For the first again. game. Not again. Right. But I really feel like Sky's going for some of these desperation moves. Looks very uncomfortable against Waz, but there's a hit confirmed. There's the harpoon. But the, one of the first times I've actually seen Waz break, he's had his hands on so much meter this entire set. Yeah, he can't crouch again. Only just got his stamina back. Yeah, nothing to hit confirm. Can't go for the meter burn insect grenade. Nice grab from Scar. He's gonna get corner pressure on this. Very, very brutal throw there. Multiple hits to the face, and oh, very good mix-up. So all the triborgs have that have that little two-two mix-up that they can throw. Yeah, in the two, one, three. Ooh. Oh, the down one, increased range, and there's the smoke away. But scoured out, Waz still wise to it. Finally, get, finally, finally, the X smoke away, he's getting scouted, <gasps> and that's gonna keep Scar guessing. But he's knocked down in the corner from the farther that the set goes. And he's gonna get not the hit stun. He's going for the damage here into the corner. Yep, knocked down. He's gonna get plus frames on this. Yeah, just patient. Oh! oh, the roar overhead. That's the first time we've seen Scar go for that. Full combo. This should be the round. I don't think Waz is going to break this. Yeah, keep the corner positioning. Oh, wait, never mind. Throw him out. Never mind. The guy said anything. But Waz, with two bars of meter going into this round, it's definitely in his favor. Scar, yeah, let's say anything on block or hit, and he's going to get that meter for a breaker. So he came off the bar for the plus frames. So now if Waz lands a hit, he's going to get some damage. Got the jump kick. The corner, oh, almost overextended that time. But because Waz has been consistently being anti ed by the standing one, that's why he's now going for the jump kicks. His jump kicks are working, but the issue is the jump kick leads to no damage. If these jump ins that aren't being anti ed anymore were jump punches, he'd be getting full combos for his trouble. No bar to go for the escape. Waz still in control, expecting an escape, but not today. Oh, There's the confirm into insect grenade. And that's the second time that we've seen a stagger in, into the back block. And then he looks for Scar to press the button, catch that whip punish. Taking the plus frames on the ground. Oh my god, tries to go for grab. I do not think that was what he was after. Looks like an execution error to me. Oh, the invisibility. Oh no! Invisible mix! What's the, what's the mix? Oh my god, I don't know, I can't see it. Drops the combo. This could be it. Oh! How, how, how do you purposely neutral duck an invisible character? Oh my goodness! My god. God, that was just timing, straight up timing. Oh he's gonna grab now, I don't need to see him. I'm just gonna crouch and stand up, but if he's done it, I win. Wow, and back to the wall right now. Scar's down 2-0 to Waz, and we get to see the character that, ma that he made a name for himself with, Mama Blade. This was the character that put Scar on the map, especially in MKX. Back in the day, Scar known as a Scarlet player during the days of Mortal Kombat 9. Keeping the mantle, the original demo Sonya, and that's why he's gone into demolition right now. The grenades, they were changed a little bit in the final version of the game, where now they don't get as many reps with the same grenade, but Scar was able to adapt to those changes like super impressively. The, what the grenades do is they make you so scared to press buttons. And what's really good about this particular matchup, I wanted to highlight earlier, if he had gone demo, was that her wake-ups don't move her. So she has to hold the grenades uh, if, she gets, if she gets knocked down in the corner. So even if she does wake up armor, the, the meaty grenade's gonna pop her up. Yeah, of course. And uh, I, wouldn't be with it. I wouldn't be surprised oh. if that's what we see. Now this first round, I think it's gonna be just data for Waz. You know, Scar's gonna be going back and sort of de-rusting a little bit with Sonya. Hasn't used her all day. Now Waz, I'm certain he hasn't actually played Scar's Sonya before. So this first round is gonna be just really important data on how he tries to get out, but he gets caught by the insect lift. No break yet from Scar. But if Scar jumps down, this actually is the round. Watch out for the X-ray. Oh, he came up oh. two bars for that though, that was costly, but he took the round. 
Yeah, it was. It was worth it. I yeah, can't believe that EX grenade recovered that fast for him to and, and for him to react to the anti with the down too. But that's the thing. That grenade drop. The less grenades that she has, the more projectiles that that drone will actually drop. So Sonya becomes more dangerous when she has no grenades left to go. Oh, that's 19% right there. That's so mean that you, you almost have to eat. 19% and a free reload. Ooh, dive kick beats the forward one. Ooh. But possibly read a dive kick right there at that distance uh, when he saw Sonya go for the neutral jump. Oh my god. If only he had confirmed, that would have been a full combo. Nades are loaded. This is a more dangerous situation for Waz here. And the invincible wake up there. That's one of the best wake ups in the game, and it always has been. He tossed two grenades, and now he's out of the grenades. And this is this is where you want to get aggressive on, on uh, Demolition Sonya. Once she's out of grenades, you, you need to turn up the aggression. Waz wasn't ready to confirm that forward one, so he just lets the string rock rather than going to insect grenade. Oh. And the read from Scar, knowing he's going to go for the jump. And he does get a game on the board. Now, I think this is going to be some time, I think, for Waz to just think about it. He's going straight into restart match, but. We're going to see if he can get a bit more comfortable in this matchup. Ooh. Wow. For just swing it. all the great afterwards. And he, even in a poke counter poke situation, that's what Sonya is so scary. You saw in the corner earlier in that last game, he, he just did down three grenades, and you think it's your turn since you blocked it down three. Uh-uh-uh. I mean, today. at any moment, those grenades will detonate. So it's such a it's such a mix-up in itself. Wake up, overpositor a strike. Good call to do it then before a grenade was on screen. But I've got to say, Waz looks a lot more uncomfortable in this matchup. I mean, there's no way to really get demo experience unless you're for Scar. Oh, I, th I think he missed the reload there. I did Scar off that knockdown. That's stuff to get him back there. He's coming off a lot of resources here. And he finally gets the punish. But he opts to save the bar. He wants to go meatless for this one. Knockdown. Goes Ooh. for the overhead. Actually, a good delayed wake up from Scar. Goes straight into the grenade, and that's going to be a free round for Scar. What's scary about those air grenade calls, especially in the situation, is uh, he'll go to throw you. Even if you tech it, you're eating that. It's just, what do you do in that situation? you got to make the hard ultimate read. And he cross up down two, but Scar's going to be happy to just beat out the corner. Ooh. Hit confirm into insect grenade. We're punishing that dive kick, which has increased recovery on it in the latest uh, update. Indeed. Now what does Scar do on wake up? Oh, oh. Uh, kick. That's going to be a free reload. Any time, like especially as Demolition Sonya, you'll sometimes see Sonya players, they'll forego damage just to get the reload. Because grenades, that's how you're going to win the round. That's the money right there. Oh, yeah. What? That was that's it. the second time that he's thrown that bug and he's gotten uh, a trip guard. Full screen running in. All right, we're going to get a knockdown. Knockdown's going to be grenades. This does mean that when Waz inevitably does try, if he gets a knockdown in this situation, which he might not even get the chance to, because here comes more grenades, Scar's going to get a knockdown and a reload for more pressure. This could be the money shot right here. Oh! Yep, scared to press buttons. Tries to jump back, but still in a bad spot. The grab, that's oh going to guarantee Oh my goodness! Again. Scar is bringing this one back, proving why the change to Sonya has been so fruitful for him. 2-2, two, two, are we going to see a switch? Is, is this Waz's only character? I'm not too sure. He's thinking about Broodmother, I think. She, uh, this is the keep away variation of Devora. And it was, so he's actually going for it. Waz, the Devora specialist, is betting the farm on Broodmother. Here and, we go. And in a, in a situation like this, in a final game, you're going to throw something unorthodox that Scar might not know too much about. Well, think about it, right? He's essentially forcing Scar to just play a rec match. You know, he's, he's forcing him into this best of one. If Scar is not prepared for some weird Broodmother stuff... And weird it is. This is the time to do it. But Waz, you know, he's been a Devorah specialist since day one, so if he knows how to use Broodmother, this is the time to show it. Unfortunately, he's in defensive spot and was able to reverse the position immediately. Oh, the bug's coming out. Here it comes! Yep. Broodmother gets projectiles and a bug drop. The bug drop is a low, which sets up for some weird hard to blockable situations. Oh my, oh God. my goodness, it, it converted into the other grenade. Tries to go for the wake up bug blast, but scouted out by Scar. Yeah, there's the bug drop, trying to establish some space here. But I feel like she does a good job of just going under all of it, so we'll see how the, the zoning actually fares. I think Waz just wants to have more to contest in the neutral with. The thing is, when he finally closes in the space, I wonder what his pressure's gonna be like. He's not looking very comfortable here. Yep, can't down one because the grenade just catches you out and scar on the reverse match point. This could be a reverse 3 0. Sonya, look like the magic pick all along. Oh, oh my goodness! Way to start the match and take what could be the final breath out of Waz right now in the corner. What's gonna be the mix? Holding the grenade pressure. And Scar on it's, the offensive. It's so dangerous. The grenade pressure is mad. At any point, he could release it. Insect drop, using it to establish some space again. 
but she's just going under all of it, so I'm not sure how useful this variation is actually faring for Waz. Yeah, nothing has worked so far on Scar. Uh oh, that could be bad news. We're gonna get another reload, and this could be the final it, connection. It, it, oh. it, has, it has two bars, so he's gonna have some to play with. Instead, not gonna need it. That's it. And Game how are we gonna over. Splitter in half. Scar with a really impressive showing that reverse 3 0, really showing why multiple characters can benefit you in this game. But props to Waz for getting this far. I mean, he gets top eight at an um, amazing event as stacked as this. Very, very impressive. And obviously, you know, he was definitely the underdog going into this set, no doubt about it. Scar was one of the best players in Mortal Kombat X, especially during its prime. I mean, Mortal Kombat X was the game that Scar got sponsored for in the first place. Yes, it was, and we're going to move on to winner's finals next. Um, as Scar, with that victory, is going to move on to face Tekken Master in the loser's uh, semis. That this is, gonna is be a ridiculous top four. And uh, winner's finals coming up is, of course, Noble Rewind going up against Killer Zenok. And Killer Zenok's a guy who's only come here a few times, but when he has come, he's done some damage. I think Killer Zenok is one of those players that he's always been in Mortal Kombat X tournaments, but he's been very sort of like up and down, very inconsistent with when he can actually place. But when he places, he places damn well. Yes, he does. And the last time, before this event, the last time I saw him, I believe it was a KIT where he showed up with his tremor for the very first time and just started annihilating people left and right. No, it actually may have been at NEC. Uh, but it was a while ago when he showed up and with this character looking really strong so far. I mean, taking out Tekken Master the way he did, I'd be kind of worried. He looked unstoppable. And to be honest with you, even though Tekken Master hasn't really been grinding this game, you know, there's, there's no, I'm going to go out and say it, there's no getting around that fact. He has been focusing on Injustice 2. But loads of these guys have been focusing on, you know, Killer Genok plays Injustice 2. Rewind is playing Injustice 2. Everyone is taking part in this game as well. Killer was one hit away from making MK9 top 8. Yeah, exactly. But it takes a special kind of player to make it look like Tekken Master has no options. You know, to make Tekken yes. Master look that uncomfortable, who is a legend in his own right. Yeah, that was just a beautiful display of Mortal Kombat X and Rewind, who uh, had, a, had a little bit more of a fight Mortal on his Kombat match. XL. And coming in here, I'm not too sure. I don't think these guys have ever played MKX before. For sure. I don't recall them ever playing together. Do you think that he's gonna go for possibly like a full auto Jackie to just take try to take armor out of the game? Uh, well, with the zoning, or is, is, is he going to st stick to his roots? At the end of the day, you're going to need to make sure you go with a character that has either an answer for the Tremor armor with Crystalline, or make sure that the character you pick doesn't massively struggle against the armor. Because there are some characters in the game which they have amazing tools, but their amazing tools are one hit. The second you fight Crystalline, and you go for the options that are great, but one hit, he chews through it, and your option is gone. Now, this is either button check into... This is either button check into restart match, where it actually will be quite interesting if Rewind does go with Ninjutsu, because it is a sick character. Um, but or are they going to go back when the button check is done? Now, what about Ninjutsu, or Ninjutsu does is that it actually has a two-hitting launcher. That's what I was thinking about, 4-2, right? Exactly. Is that, is that if he actually catches him not blocking, with that armor activated, he's actually getting launched. I think they've gone to player select, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it looks like player select to me. It would have been very weird if Rewind did go, Rewind did go into Ninjutsu this late in the tournament. We know he plays those characters, and you made the call. Full auto, let's go. You know, I'm not that great at the game anymore, but... I hey, man, there's game. nothing wrong with that. I've got the old man reads. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rewind is coming in with full auto Jackie. We're going to see a character that excels at... It's so weird. She excels full screen, and she excels right up in your face. I mean, she was the original hated character by the online masses because of her machine guns, but when she gets up close, oh baby, is she a nightmare. But this is going to be winner's finals of Mortal Kombat X. Killer Shinnok versus Noble Rewind. Here we go, Crystalline versus Full Auto. And now putting up the EX Flex, which means that it doesn't take damage on the hit that he absorbs. And he was... Jackie Briggs oh. is covered in plus two. There are so many instances where she's plus two, and standing four is so fast that it combos into the low shot, which is a full combo in itself. Rewind, a master of frame data at this point. He knows when he can press buttons and when he can continue offense. The jump back, what a read! And that's gonna be another launch. And JP, oh, tries to go for a little bit of a cute oh one. Oh my goodness, he is stopping every approach that Killer Zenok has attempted and shutting down the four and one already. Rewind, starting off this winner's finals. So strong. Yep, and I'm not surprised to see it. I think the ball's really going to be in Jinnok's court now to make sure that he can get around this. Yeah, he, here comes the zoning. And he's mixed up, so uh, Zinnok actually stopped his approach early on by a down four in the back two attempt. And what he's done, what Rewind's done to fix that up, is he's run up instantly and he stopped. Oh, plus, plus, wait, oh, wait, what? He did straight shot and the final hit connected behind it and he's still converted off it. 
Oh my word, Jinok is disrespecting, and that's gonna be dead right there. And uh, in another well realm, that would have been a brutality, but another not today. Day. I think that was a flawless victory. That yeah. was I, I either either a flawless or near. Nah, lost one flawless. little bit of damage. Oh, oh my god! Wait a minute, they made us wait. They made us wait for that one. But I think that was a good call out that he was gonna go for full auto Jackie Briggs because she has so many ways that can challenge the flex armor. It's no wonder why he's gone for this. It's like this, this master counter picking game that Rewind has been known for. And I love the mind game that Rewind's playing off of his run itself. He'll run stop, and right there, he's mixing up when he's gonna stop that run and if he's gonna do the low rocket, if he's gonna do the straight shot. He's, he's doing an amazing job. Oh! Armored back forward two has other plans, and there's the plus two, knowing that Jonak has to hold it. The second he tries to disrespect, he gets caught by the standing four. Disrespecting the plus frames in the four again, blocking the four and then going through, but oh. there is the armor. This is why Crystal is such a good variation. And that was a punish armor, would be a safe special move. Indeed, normally safe on block, but not there against Crystal. This will be some good damage, gonna end in a hard knockdown, this man's gonna flex up, oh yeah! And her one defensive option is the back forward too. So Crystalin on the knockdown does have the advantage here, but he's forced to break. That meter burn upshot was going to be good news for Rewind, but no confirm, no good for the OTG. And, and he again. gets the second one. We've seen that multiple times where he just he just lays it on the line and goes for multiples. I feel like of all the characters too, Jackie's not going to be, she's not going to have as many of those likely full screen options to get around the ground pound. And if you expect it, you just have to jump. Eat to raw jumping, my word. Oh, I think Rewind was banking on him low profile on that, <laughs> Been playing a female right now. That was so sick, that advancing mid, he's gonna get big damage and a knockdown. The armor's gonna run out, but at this point he's got so much life, I don't think he cares. And he's got armor for the counter poke. The jump out is gonna make it whiff, what but it, plenty what of work have to do! And the raw jumping connects, forced to break. Oh, in the oh. back too, almost sent him home. He's a little bit for a chip out, but nice delayed wake up by Rewind, letting him whiff, gonna get a little bit of damage. What's gonna be for breakfast? My, I doubt to! My God! I felt that in my chest! That just made the entire room shake to that command. That was a Rip. savage down two. One to one right now, Zenok. Not phased whatsoever by that game one, and that's the mark of a top player right there. He's looking through variations. Is he going to go shotgun? Oh, no, he's gone off Jackie. Luke oh. can flame this. Now this is an answer to Crystalline. This is a multiple hitting character right here. It's not even the back one which hits twice. It's the windmill punches. Hit or block, we're going to see some health bars melt. If anyone in this crowd hasn't actually seen Flame Fist Liu Kang, you're in for a treat. It's just, before you know it, the game's going to be over if he wins. If he, if he gets a hit, if he has resources, health bars disappear. Ooh, in with the flash parry, probably expecting some sort of round start from Rewind, but just being patient. Yeah, and the full screen zoning. The second you pop the Flame Fist buff as well, those projectiles do 10% damage. But there's the back one too. Challenged by Zidok. There's the overhead. Another launch. Knocked down into flex. Everyone has no resources here. Has to simply wait it out. Take his turn. And beautiful reaction by Killer Zidok. And he gets the reversal. That is such a sexy looking combo. Yes, it is. All right, he's going to get pressure. Low cutter is plus on block. Disrespected by Rewind. And he's going to pay the ultimate price and lose the round. Let's see if Rewind can get something going here. Let's see why he picked this variation. I think he definitely picked it for the armor break. The thing is, he's been put on the back foot so many times, we're just straight up not getting an opportunity to see it. Down four, that's going to be plus on hit. Using the armored get off me, but still with his back to the wall. He's in danger. Just a knockdown, and he's got the armor, so the wake-up option is not possible. There it goes, acknowledging the armor's gone. And now it's his time. The flash parry works, but no punish. But he's still in control. Yeah, luckily there for Liu Kang, his low projectile table, a little profile, the forward one, and not get completely punished for that a flash parry oh there by Zenok, and he laid it all on the line with the overhead. OTG, OTG. he's dead. Oh, he's not going to give it. He's not going to give us the brutality. That's what the, a the only way to stop guy. it. The only way to stop a brutality is hit it before that. To be fair, Rewind does have the fastest pause into exit game speed in the business. If anyone's been on his Twitter, like, no one does it faster. <laughs> no one. Like, straight up, no, that's a world record right there. But he's going to be going back, I believe, actually. I uh, didn't get a look at the arms there. That's either full auto, that's going to be a shotgun change. I do believe he does have to play shotgun as well, so we'll have a look. But he's on the back foot right now. Not in a great position. Killer Zinok just on fire. And I believe that is shotgun. No, it's full auto. He's changed. He has kept with it, I understand. And his back's already to the wall, knocked down against the corner. He does have one bar to play with. Yep, there's the plus frames. Plus two off it. of everything, right? But yep. that's multiple times he's gone for the stand four rocket, and Killer Zinok has jumped out of the gap. 
because he's, he's not waiting for the string to be plus two. He's waiting for the standing four, so then it's his chance to escape. I really feel like it's going to be Rewind's opportunity now to really scout that out. He's going to go for the standing four. He's got to go for something else. Ooh. Doesn't get the knockdown because he's a bit too far away, but he's still got the life lead. Shinnok just looking out of this world strong right now. There's a full combo. There's a hit confirm. He's going to break to deny anything that resembles momentum. And this is match point for Killer Shinnok. This crystalline looking unstoppable right now. One health bar away from making it to the grand finals of Mortal Kombat here. Oh, and I love how he's, 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 he's just now throwing something new at Rewind, which is the unblockable here. Oh, that forward one too. Such a hitbox on that second hit. Plus on block, rolling cutter. Rewind is going to be respecting. We're going to see some cancels now just to throw a little bit of spice into the mix. Ooh. Yeah, he was expecting a button press. The jump back into a full combo again, but no, he goes in for the splat instead. I mean, even though he's not going for these full combo conversions, he's still got full control of this corner. Oh, now he's just trying to swag on us. That forward to overhead, super telegraph, but can really catch oh you out. There's goodness. the knockdown. One more hit will do it. Oh my god, and he goes for the instant NJP. Killer Zinok is going to be breezing his way into grand finals on the winner's side. This that, is a result for this guy. That last round was, it's, it's just, it says everything about him in this tournament right now. The way that he played made every single right read. This man is playing probably the best Mortal Kombat of his Mortal life, Kombat and he is itself. dominating this tournament. I feel like the change to, to Tremor in general has been a very fruitful decision for Killer Genoc. He was, guy he, was, he was cage first. He, he was for a always long time. just. Aggressive, 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 and uh, pre-patch A-list, or, or uh, yeah, it was A-list, right? The yeah, A-list, that was his main variation. And uh, that, that had a lot of plus frames, very aggressive. Uh, got toned down just a little bit, and he found something that I think is even more oppressive in Crystalline Tremor, again, with the, with the flex, but he makes amazing reads on top of that, and you add on top of that an amazing player, that's just a recipe for success. I don't feel like it's Johnny Cage that Killers Yannock likes in MKX as much as it is just aggressive rushdown. Yeah. And Crystalline is the answer to that, because on top of amazing rushdown, you get access to the great defensive options of not even having to be on wake up, but I mean, we've, we've seen how effective that armor is. It just shuts down so many characters. And even when we saw it against Flora Jackie Briggs, her back forward two, the armored reversal, single hitting, yes, it's safe on block normally, safe but not when up. you fight Crystalline. Yeah, absolutely, it takes away a mechanic of the game entirely, uh, which is just so scary, but that's not a here nor there. Is we're gonna move on down to the loser side, loser semis, Tekken oh, Master versus one. Scar, which in any bracket ever in this game could be a grand final. I mean, if you were to tell me this is grand finals, I would have believed you. Scar and Tekken Master, two players that really made a name for themselves in Mortal Kombat X. You know, Tekken Master Evo 2016, the tournament that made him famous. There's that famous clip where he got Sonic Fox to remove the hat, right? Something that really hasn't been done before. And then you have Scar, who was one of the first players that could consistently bring it to Sonic Fox. And they were signed by Echo Fox, they were teammates, they would then practice together. And as a two-man team, Sonic Fox and Scar would just collectively dominate North American yeah. tournaments. Yes, they did. And and it was for a very long time. And these guys are gonna button check it out, and we are gonna go with the matchup that we saw. Uh, so this is one. Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious because it's scarred here in the button check. If he's gonna make the switch uh, off the button check to go straight to Sonya, which is what where his success lied against Devora against Waz. Well, we know that he's not shy from changing. Especially in this situation where, you know, if one of his characters isn't working out, he doesn't feel like his other character isn't prepared. And I think that's going to be really dangerous having a top eight situation where some of these guys, you know, they're, they're not able to dust off every single one of their characters. But if you can stick to the two-man team that can collectively cover the entire cast, I actually think that Smoke and Sonya are two characters that between them don't have a bad matchup. Exactly. All right, Tekken Master, he's going in for Devora. This aggressive machine, a little bit of a, what, like a drop there. And that's going to be a confirm on that 1-1-1 one, one, one into Smoke Bomb. Let's see if he can get some mix going here. One for the throw, but a nice crash by Tekken Master. Went for the down too, uh, a little bit too late. It looked like Omnak gets thrown himself. Ooh, Tekken Master tried to run in, but didn't have the stamina. You guys heard it here. Yeah, absolutely. Running into some sprint pressure. I just within the integrate, there's a bit of uh, shakiness from these guys. But that could just be losers bracket this late on in the tournament. And if they're going to shake this off, it's going to have to be round number one in the first match. Yeah, if you guys aren't familiar or aren't aware, this is a $2,500 pop bonus here for Mortal Kombat X. These guys are playing for some money. Yeah. A lot of stuff's on the line right now. There's a so nice chunk of change. And actually, a good read, expecting Scar to not go for the four on that 4-3-4. Four, four. And he was bang on the money. Rarely see that thing go punished because, again, the four can come so late and catch you trying to punish it. Tries to crouch, but actually eats it just completely. Yeah, nice down one. 
Obviously, understanding that when a low poke connects and more come out, general rule of thumb is that a low poke can be plus in some way, so it's going to be your turn afterwards. Are you going to hit stun off that down three and follow it in? Oh, sorry, down, that down four, the back three actually goes a little bit farther forward. All these technical normals. Tech Master now out of stamina, but going to try to use the EX throw bug, but it's nicely crouched by Scar because that does generate some plus frames, some more plus frames for it. Yeah, you might be asking why did he go for that, but sometimes uh, the way to get out of that forward one string is actually to get hit by the final hit and kind of get you out of a bad situation. I think he was really expecting Scar to get hit by the third hit and it's stand up into the Intech grenade, but thinking a bit too far ahead, really. Ooh, almost got to be first off the smoke uh, bomb there. But unfortunately, we stuck his blocks done. Off the swarm summon. These guys just feeling each other out here side by side. And Scar has had a couple of or moments where he's just swung with 1 1 1 and got some whip punishes. Gonna get some damage here and take the round. Yes, it is. He's gonna go for the meter burn teleport into the standing forge to finish the job. Tekken Masters back to the wall here. And actually, Scar <laughs> doesn't want to be near the corner. I think he's happy taking the fight mid screen. Ooh, beautiful conversion. They almost got something. I think maybe could have snuck in another little instant run cancel. And that is why we see the insect grenade used at the end, because that time Scar actually did get hit, which gave him the pressure on Wake Up. Confirms it's a harpoon. What's coming next? Uh, just taking the plus frames of 114. Oh, just smoke bomb. Yeah, staggers it into the overhead. Smoke's mix up game so dangerous when he gets going. And there's a lot of things that you are, Again. oh my goodness, that you have to make the guess on if he's going to smoke for it, if he's going to smoke away, if he's, if he's going to do the actual combo, if he's going to stop, go for a 50-50. That could be safe, that could be plus. He's going to mix up again, he's going to be behind me, in front of me. And just like that, Scar taking game number one, coming back and in a matchup that he was just losing moments ago and now winning against Techmaster. That was straight up just a smoke round. You know, the second he can actually start his game, and get the offense on the go. He has so many things he can cancel on hit and block, you know, smoke away. The fact that even strings by themselves, like, you know, even down three, standing three, they're plus on hit as well. You can cancel any of those into smoke away, which actually makes seeing the next mix up a lot harder. Now, here comes the character change. Shinnok versus smoke. Ooh. I like this because I believe um, Shinnok does actually get access to a move that he can loop an imposter. Sometimes he can get a move that he can combo into itself and he gets what resembles a vortex. Sometimes he'll get something like Liu Kang straight kick or Sonya Blade leg lifts. I think against all of the Triborgs, he can loop it and it's different depending on the variation. Ooh, look at Scar looking for the early reaction of the teleport with stand one as well, which I think is Triborg's best uh, option against that. Uh, maybe even they're down two. We'll have to see how the matchup goes on, Tekken Master. Oh my goodness, and he unblockable damage buff command grab interactable. FYI, people, that was guaranteed. If he gets the imposter restand near an interactable, he gets the damage buff and the unblockable factor. Oh, what's the mix? Oh my goodness, where is he? Oh, oh my god. And he gets hit by the second hit, which is allowing Tekken Master just to get some damage. Woo! But the standing one, he's ready for the tricky portal. Go for that right damage into the corner. Does, does not have to worry about a wake up at all. The 50 50, and he kept it plus just in case. Option selecting itself. He's going to do some hit stun and try to close down the throw, and he doesn't, but what a tech on Tekken Master's behalf. Does that have the bar? Oh. And Jump back into Vine. I mean, understanding what stage you can use for the interactables, it really can save your skin, and that's why. And that has a deceptively large hitbox everywhere on the screen. That was actually really brave of Tekken Masters didn't, uh, challenging the plus two with his own forward four. I know it's a really fast button, but I'm pretty sure Triborg in general does have some normals that can beat someone disrespecting the plus two. Yeah, and smoke bombs, we can loop it into itself. Which is so scary to get hit by. I mean, getting Vortex in a game like this, that's all about offense is so scary, but both these characters can kind of kind of do the similar thing, especially uh, in what's essentially a mirror once he steals the move. Yeah, very much so. They both have these restand situations, even without the smoke bomb. Oh, the delayed low, but didn't want to pull the trigger on the health sparks. But he is now. Scar, I think, was just confident he wasn't going to go for it. Now, Scar probably going to let himself get hit. Yeah, don't let Tekken Master build the meter. There is Round of peace here. Tekken Master. No resources right now, no meter, and it got the Ross! I don't think he was actually ready for that to land, but we'll take it down two anyway. And now here comes the mix-ups, take the guaranteed 16% on the grab. Scar just like that, down 50% life. And what? He's been pushed into the corner by the escape. And that's incredibly plus as well. Wow, you, you, very good. You want to talk about a moment where it, everything, to every, it goes 0 to 100 real quick, get crossed up by that interactable, and now you're in the corner and they're plus. Down three, just to make the jump in whiff. I like it. Yeah, the crouch, but no punish. Oh, oh. just the forward four down one. And any stray hit, Scar still having the conversions on deck. Scoring the knockdown. Now respect 
That wake up is a bit delayed though by Tekken Master. Comes off his only resources and he went for the stand one and got burned. Yep, he tried to anti cross up. Scar actually making the big play to not break this. And Tekken Master not going for the throw there either. That was a tricky situation for both of these gentlemen. The crouch! And he's going to take the plus frames on the down one. He doesn't want to risk anything else. If the down one hits, he's plus enough for a down four, which is going to cement the game win. Scar really risky holding on to that bar for so long. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, maybe, especially going to put it into a, into a mixed situation at the end of it. The thing is, I mean, in some of these situations, you can actually understand why he saved it, because if you can x-ray or something like that, then obviously you're going to move into the next game, but... You know, really all or nothing that was. Yeah, tries to answer back to the interactable, but not quite. Taking the plus frames from the smoke bomb, and there's the opening. All right, so the man's just covered in smoke, and you actually can't see the normal that Just threw out scary situation. Yeah. Woo! Using the 1-1-4. Using the one, one, remember, guys, it's currently... Should be 1-1, one, one, I believe. Yeah, this is 1-1, one, one, I believe, on the scoreboard. And... Oh, my goodness! And I'm actually... So, Scar, I think, back in the day, would have interrupted that, that uh, shoulder into the meter bird uh, with, with a 1-1-1, one, 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 anything like that, but... Because, you know, it's been a little while. Russ might be there. Second match still has two bars. And five left the corner, and that was a... Maybe a little bit risky there by Scar. Every time he's thrown out a high it, that close to Tekken Master, it's gotten down forward and it has gotten hell sparked. So that's what's so scary about him throwing Ooh. highs this close to this man. Yeah, I mean, I feel like at this level of play, you've got to take risks to Scar. I'm not sure if that was an instant NJP attempt, but he just didn't manage to pull it off. But he's going to spend that second bar to get the Lord. You know, it's an expensive reversal, but a reversal nonetheless. And Scar's done a really good job. He hasn't gotten truly vortexed yet. He's blocked every single time off the chance, and he'll even just take the hit uh, right. on the throw. And we're fully invincible, and the mix is just dirty from here on out. Actually, it looks to me like he just went for a straight up 1 1. Just 1 1 smoke bomb. Because if you're invisible, you're expecting a mix up, so you're going to be challenging to some degree. Just go for a 1 1 1. That's hit confirmable. Oh my god! Oh my goodness, that was. Oh! oh. That was insanity. Always ready. And it's the clutch from Scar. To see Tricky Portal, under no circumstances do I not standing one there. It doesn't have much startup. You don't have much to go How off. How is he reacting to that? That's so fast. It's so good. Um, there's, 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 there's audio cues, and there's that little purple haze that shows up. But he's already in your face by the time that happens. So for him to have, have those young man reactions for his age, go, go ahead, Scar. And he's going to open him up with the back 2-1. That's a full hit confirm, and he's going to get a Vortex situation. I say that because the knockdown, especially in the corner, because the meter system on the wake up, it's still a guaranteed situation regardless of what happens. And it's so plus on hit is that air grab. Oh, a little early on the stand one attempt there. I think he meant to go for an actual anti crossover. Let's get a restand here. There we go. Just taking one more one, probably expecting an armored reversal, but the second he doesn't see it, just goes in for the mid, and this is going to be match point for Echo Fox Scar in MKX. And I, I love when he goes for the one 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 in the smoke port, and he mixes up throw and one one one. So if you go for the tech and he does the one one one, you're getting full comboed, and he's really good at hit confirming that. And Scar just playing a really good game right now. Scar just playing this matchup so well. I mean, they're, they're both playing oh. this matchup well, but Scar just that next level understanding of how to approach it. I mean, Shinnok, these are two of the three best characters in the game. So it's no wonder they're familiar with each matchup, but Tekken Master forced to break. Oh, now... trying to slide this man's DMs and puts himself into the corner, but no fear whatsoever, Echo Fox. Scar gonna get another oh reset. He's going invincible, and now I don't know what he's gonna do. That's a forward one three. I recognized it, but I don't know how. One Ooh. more hit, the conversion. This might be it. He's gonna, gonna get a launch here. I think this is game over. He's gonna hit, they're gonna do it. And it is as Echo Fox's Scar is gonna send Tekken Master home here in Mortal Kombat 3 to 1. Here in Loser's Semis, he's gonna advance to play Rewind in Loser's Finals. So we have a run back, Ackerman. These guys fought earlier in the bracket. Rewind was the one that was able to move on, but obviously he fell convincingly to kind of Jinokan win his finals. Regardless of what grand finals we're going to get from this Losers Finals, I think us and the entire crowd and you guys at home, we're in for a real treat with this one. Absolutely. And in this Losers Finals, uh, in the run back, expect something maybe a little bit different from Scar. And we saw him go back-to-back -back matches against the, you know, similar matchups and perform differently. So maybe he might come into this match, do things differently, and just perform better. Well, if there's time to adjust to how things went, Scar, he's going to be plenty warmed up after that really convincing win against Tekken Master. Uh, it's really good to see these guys back, man. I mean, I know these guys don't get to play Mortal Kombat X all the time, but coming back into this top eight, you know, we have Killer Genok, we have Rewind, we have Scar, we have Tekken Master, for crying yes, out loud. Yes, we had we Foxy do. earlier on. Like, it's great to see these guys back uh, with this 
Amazing game that yeah, we will there, miss there, very there much. There's so many entrants from Mortal Kombat as well. So shout, shout out to everyone that's here that signed up and actually played in Mortal Kombat. Everyone watching at home, you guys are keeping it alive. Um, and amazing stuff for NetherRealm. To not only support Mortal Kombat, go back in time even further, support Mortal Kombat 9. I mean, and, and, of course, Injustice 2 here. We all, under in, we all in, understand. In the home of NetherRealm. I mean, that's exactly what I was about to say, right? You know, Mortal Kombat is born and bred in Chicago. Combo Breaker is always such a celebration of NetherRealm games. That's why we had two Mortal Kombats here. That's why we obviously still have Injustice 2 with the Pro Series. It's a celebration of all of these games that brought the whole community together. You know, we all started with a different game, and they're all being represented here at Combo Breaker 2018. So we're going into Losers Finals. The winner of this will be moving on into Grand Finals on the loser side, where they'll be facing off against Kalejinok. But they've got to get through each other first. It's going to be Noble Rewind and Echo Fox Scar. The run back. 3-1 in Rewind's favor on the winner's side. And we're going to see the same exact matchup. Scar showing no fear right now. He's likely to feel a little bit more confident with this one. He's had plenty of time to de-rust with that smoke, with that loser's rampage that he's currently been on. But taking the minus frames instantly, getting a grab and the first hit bonus. And yeah, Rewind already picked up where he left off, which he threw Scar so many times on the winner's side and get drawing first blood. That's why getting huge damage here. And getting a nice restand plus frames. I actually really like Rewind as, as kind of catching on to some of Scar's tendencies. Uh, in the previous set, we just saw against Second Master, we were seeing 1-1-1 one, one, one to bait an armored interruption on the two, and when he didn't see it, he would press buttons. The first time we saw 1-1-1 one, one, one against Rewind, he challenged it and caught a full combo, and the rest of the round is history. And already all over the smoke port in the corner as well, Rewind, looking so strong here. For having not played a match here in, uh, in, in quite a few minutes, that Scar has just warmed up completely. But I love that the moment that Rewind knocked down Scar the very first time in the corner, he put out a couple down threes, and it actually beat the uh, smoke port. And what's great about that is that he used that, that hit stun, and he's got plus frames himself. He can just continue to, to, to batter and abuse smoke with these buttons. As woo we got Scar kind of turn things around here, don't we? Yep, if he knows that Rewind's going to sit there and block, waiting for things to punish, and the chase down on the flip. That was good stuff. If you're going to be content there, sitting there blocking smoke, then, well, I'm just going to throw grabs out. Speaking of which, taking the minus frames to get a grab into the corner. Very Definitely nice. don't count out Rewind. That's such an amazing string. Oh, oh Shao Kahn's hammer laying R. down R. the law. And there we go. Super plus on him. Dedicating into the low. Good block from Scar, though. That would have been a full combo into the same situation again. Expecting a shimmy on the back one. Scar is not going to bite. He's not going to bite. Oh, the NJP expecting another back one. And he's going to get exactly what he's after. And that was just patience at its finest. I mean, he was taking so many back ones, uh, so many checks with the down threes, and just waited. And the one time that, oh, that, that everyone decided to change things up, and NJP was waiting for him. And Scar now getting a little bit of momentum going. If anyone's wondering why I said that the smoke away is one of the best reversals in the game, that's why. Very little moves in this game let you evade while invincible and still get a whiff punish because forward one three is such a good string. Oh, overhead. Just 18% safe on block. Oh. Overhead starter. That's such a good check if you want to stay safe but still enforce a mix up. And speaking of mix ups, Rewind's going to get one of his own. Taking the plus frames. Oh Man, my goodness. Chip damage on those akimbo pistols. No as gaps, well. no armoring. There's nothing. You're holding that. Yes, you are. Rewind up one game trying to. Uh, Repeat history here and send Scar home and just try to get a run back with Killer Zinok. But this is a long fight, far from over. And what's going to be the mix here from Scar? Is going to go for the damage here mid screen? It's going to run up. Nope. Just going to stay full screen. Rewind. Going to try to make an approach. All Cassie needs is an instant run in the back one, and she is in there. Taking the both frames. Oh, trying to smoke away yet. Catch the whip punish. Like you mentioned earlier, so good at setting up those whip punish. Uh, attempts, and Scar's caught in a few of them. Rewind, the, although he's playing the matchup right, has got copy and overly aggressive, but it's something that he he has to keep the momentum up. He has to keep Scar on his toes the whole time, right? So, so the fact that I see him getting caught both being overly aggressive a few times, I don't necessarily say that's a bad thing for Rewind because this aggression is paying off. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, if, if, if anyone knows when to go in, it's going to be the likes of Rewind too. Has very little fear, goes into oh. the reversal, but scouted out by Scar. Not today, mate. All right, if there, was a, if there was one decision, I might be going for another hammer right there. But if it would have hit, hammer time. Yep, we've got knockdown too, you know, so it's always not just about the damage itself, it's interactable, but it's kind of what you get off it at the same time. Ooh. Oh my god! I, I, I'm actually shocked what? That, that something traded with a baton. Did I just see a teleport punish stance change? I've never seen that before. <laughs> I don't even know what he tried to do. But either way, 
he still manages to recover. And there's that meter burn, that punch. Forcing the overhead option. Safe on block, so of course he's just going to use it to be advantageous oh, instead. Rewind tried to disrespect some plus frames there and got absolutely burned. And Scar throwing out that back one from quite a distance. So much respect being shown from both these guys. Yes, backdashing the string. One of the first times we've seen that string actually get backdashed. Backdash and ding dong, some plus frames are here, and excellent block on the low, but Rewind coming off the bar to stay safe with the EX flip. Yep, doesn't finish the string. He's going into down three instead, just in case Scar challenges using the plus frames to get the grab. And it's one round each. An amazing down four. You talked about how we, well, we talked about good Scar's attacking throws, but to throw th throws at him that are unorthodox, like the throw out of the corner, that's, that increases your success chance, I think, of it not getting teched. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if you want to make the hard read and neutral duck instead expecting a grab, that's suicide against that, both Smoke That's the hard Cassie, read right yeah. there. In the corner we go as Scar is going to go for a mix-up here. He is, but he keeps a plus, which is so good. And in the plus frames, using invincible frames herself. That's what makes her nut punch so dangerous. Because, you know, the second he tries to reset into a situation, the invincible nut punch is something you just have to respect. There's the knockdown. One more setup, and Scar's going to take this game. Just the raw pack three down four. And, and yeah. in the chip out. Yeah, he, he. I think he went for the four three there just in case uh, he, he woke up crouching. That string, which is, which is his normal chip out and go to. Really smart by Scar there, and the adjustments made already. We're already at 1 1. And we Try talked about me. the adjustments that could be made, and Scar coming in with a little bit of momentum on the loser side. The only thing that would have saved him there was wake up nut punch, right? I mean, that, that's literally because it's invincible. Yep. Normally armored moves would have died to it, but obviously the invincible move isn't going to have that much of a problem. Um, but that's kind of like, you know, master of hindsight. Is Re Rewind going to be sort of remembering that for when they clash again? We'll see. Which is, is uh... It's not punch against smoke. I'm not too sure if he has something that can actually. Well, he actually should be able I to reach that. I wonder if forward three goes under us. I think. I yeah. I, 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 I can't say I've ever seen it to be honest with you. We'll have to find out here in game number three between these two in losers finals. A, another first hit for rewind with a throw. Scar's been blocking solo. He's like, screw this. 50-50 time. With the throw and the meterless launcher that smoke does possess. It's one of his strengths, actually, in this game, oh, no. is that of all the Triborgs, he's one of the characters that doesn't need to use specials or anything of the like to get a substantial launch. Relax, will ya? And into a, a, a restand, a reset attempt, that's what's so scary about Smoke in general. And Scar, very good at abusing it. Nice little throw. So, his throw is one of the most aggressive looking throws in the game. Brutalizes your face in, and trying to slide those DMs, and everyone not calling out. Whether he's gonna do the four or not, he, he eats a baton to the, uh, the the metal gonads here and gets thrown himself into the corner. And Scar sit on three bars of meter can get incredibly aggressive here. One, two, oh, oh raw flip kick anti air. And before having to eat the hits done, Scar break. That was actually really smart because he could have eaten so much chip right there. I think he might. He could have even a bit of risk of dying in that situation because he would have gotten a little bit of extra damage by the end of it, and then he would have been in a horrific situation with those akimbos. So. Still back in the driver's seat, going into the back three down four, but scouted out by Rewind, trying to run in though, probably expecting a backdash, I think. Yeah, Scar, to chase something down. Scar really mixes up what he does off that string so well, whether it is down three or the backdash, and Rewind having to make the guess, and unfortunately guessing wrong there. Scar. I, mean, so I think the optimal way to play Smoke is to be this unpredictable. Tries to confirm, but leaving damage on the table. It confirms the 1-1-1 one, one, one anyway. Right, we're going to see a harpoon. I wonder what the mix-up is. Just a raw overhead, scoured out by Rewind. The back three is faster than the back one, so you block low first and kind of fuzzy the back one. Not easy to do, but at this level of play, Rewind, he's going to have the reactions to do it. Oh my goodness, the wake up from Scar. Not surprised. He's, he's just not afraid, right? In this kind of tournament situation, you need to enforce the threat oh. and the delayed <laughs> overhead, getting him to worry. And that was perfectly executed. And another oh. brutality for Smoke. One more game and Scar is going to be walking into Grand Finals. So you talked about that 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 timing that you can have, where you can fuzzy guard, you know, low and then high and kind of cover the back three and the back one. Well, he waited for, for quite some time and then back one, and that just kind of throws off your timing off everything. Because then at that point, you're thinking of shimmy into a throw, shimmy into a neutral jump, and we're going back home here to Raiden. This is, above all the characters that Rewind can play, this is his all-time favorite character. So it's no wonder that he's confident in his pick. If he's going to go out of this tournament, then by God, it's going to be with the main character. It's going to be out in style. But I mean, Displacer in this setting is hard to play on the best of days. I hope Rewind doesn't get flustered by any degree, because now he needs to make sure he drops nothing. 
Yeah, they're very tricky timings on all of his conversions. That's what's so scary about Displacer Raiden and everyone that tries to play him is that it takes such a high, it's, it's such a high execution level. Oh my god, speaking of execution, that was a crucial execution error from Rewind there. Getting a Thunderball instead. Very, very punishable. Oh! Not during the Vicino Blast either. Scar, that's ballsy to stare at, at this place of Raiden right there. Wake up down one, taking the plus frames on that EX teleport. Now, using EX teleport and pressure does work, but because it costs a buff. Oh, wait a minute, there's the punish. Here we go. Big damage. Oh, here we go. Oh my god, what's the mix up? Back one forward to restand. And here comes Rewind. Expecting a button press, but not quite. NJP doesn't work, and he's grabbed for another time. But look how much damage you got for just that one hit. Displacer, when he touches you, it hurts. Sure does, and Scar, but sitting on three bars of meter. He can, he can get risky here if he wants to. Try to close those rounds. Smoke points through the X teleport, evading the plus frames all the all together. And he's gonna hold on to two meters here in a, what could be a final round. Has a breaker, could build an X-ray. He could try to close this out in style. The thing is, Rewind spent a lot of bar in that round, but he didn't get a huge amount from it. So now going into this next round where Scar's on match point and he just landed an opening. I mean, Rewind, he's in big trouble to be honest. Oh, the unblockable. Hard stuff to deal with, especially over a restand. Forge one anti air, but no run cancel. Uh oh. This is gonna spell disaster. This is gonna be a potential mix that could be life threatening, and oh, he gets him on the low. He's gonna build a breaker, but this is his last chance. Uses the breaker a couple of hits late as well. Just the unoptimized time to break. Rewind looks a little bit checked out. Text the grab. That would have been game over, but here come the buff frames, and he disrespects the mid. Scar gets the run back on rewind, and now he. It's going to be in grand finals on the loser's side. Very good back and forth between the two. We talked about the new guard versus the old guard. Then they're splitting back and forth here. But Scar getting it when it matters on the loser's side and sending Rewind home from this bracket. And we're going to go into grand finals. Scar versus Killer Zenok, who have not played yet. This is why I think things get really interesting. Because whenever you see a grand finals take place and we have no previous results to go by, it's it's unpredictable. Anything can happen. I mean, you, you look at the way Jinok has been playing, and you go, "Well, this guy's going to be a clear favorite because he's been pretty much body bagging his way into grand finals, looking uncontested, but he hasn't fought Scar yet, and Scar has a lot more results than Jinok does in previous MKX yes, tournaments." Yes, he does. All right, make it a read. So it's Sonia. I think he's actually going to start with smoke because if you're going to be going up against Tremor. I think the smoke away is going to be an answer. Well, it's going to be somewhat of an answer for the extreme rushdown. I think he's going to want to Especially make sure. Corner, yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to want to make sure that Jinok has something to worry about, so you can't just pressure for free. That's my read. That's my assumption. I respect it. We'll, we'll see what happens coming in here for the button check. What well, could be a button check? I did hear Sonya Blade though, so yes. I could be completely wrong. Yes, we did. Um, I just see it as controlling. Uh, the approach of Tremor a little bit better, having, having the active grenades out. Oh, you mean out. a stronger neutral, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah just m much stronger presence, uh, half screen, and like I said, Smoke's weakness is unrelenting pressure, which unfortunately, Tremor has. Well, these guys are going to be bike checking, but we're so close to this grand finals. Very excited to see what happens here. These guys haven't played yet in this top eight bracket. The celebration of Mortal Kombat X and it's grand finals time. Killer Jinok from Brazil on the winner's side. Make some noise, guys. This is grand finals of Mortal Kombat. All right, the overhead coming through. Blocked. A lot safer than it used to be. Oh my goodness, what a flash parry through the grenade two here from Killer. It's the matchup knowledge. It is going to be straight up matchup knowledge. Both these guys without stamina, they're playing an actual fighting game right now. Here we go. Oh, instant jump through the grenade and a clean jump in punch. Jinok is going to get the knockdown. Oh, instantly answer back with the wake up. Neither player wants to deal with the uh, wake up options, and Scar bravely tried to go for a reload, taking it guaranteed. But I think oh that might have been Stay in this corner, and that is where you are going to be. Killer Zenok drawing first blood here, taking the first round and making some of the best reads of the tournament in this situation. Ridiculous. Uh, you're speaking of good reads. How about a point blank grenade detonation? Because he knows that Zenok's going to run in. The danger is he's flexed. He's got the armor good to go. And here comes the knockdown. I'm going to flex up. Just wants to keep the pressure on. He doesn't want to start. Oh, didn't block low. Obviously, you can go for an overhead splat there. And they're going for more pressure. Overhead this time. Blocked by Scar. Risky, to be honest. And more armor challenges. Oh, the down one. Where are you going, mate? Get back. How rare is it to see multiple uh, uh, interactables on the stage get bodied? How hard is it to actually beat out those dive kicks? Oh, he's he's just, done it twice he in a row. the wake up, so he's still point blank. Scar. We get knocked down. Grenade reload. Everything counts on this. Oh! But he gets caught 
by the low ground pound. That was on the third hit too. He was a couple of frames away from holding that brutality. Flash parry to try and go through the dive kick. Didn't actually absorb anything, but the forward one's gonna catch the airborne dive kick regardless. And the down two trade, he'll happily take that trade just to reset the neutral situation. Oh, sucker punch. Oh. That back two covers so much ground in approaches. I mean, aerial and ground, it's, it's a mid. Forcing the break Whoa. from Scar, another point blank grenade. The advancing strings, you gotta watch out against someone like Demolition who's gonna go for the close detonation every time. Jumping out of the rolling cutter, a hard read, but good data for Shinnok. Loads up the grenades for coming up some pressure. Nice down one. He loads the first frames to get some pressure himself. These guys are swinging right now here. Half screen. And that's what's ama amazing me right now is that these two are playing at the same speed. They are. Absolutely. That's one thing Tremor forces you to do. It's play this game at a thousand clean jumping. It's going to get blocked, but he's going to enforce the low mix up anyway. Actually opting to go for a reload. Confident he doesn't need it. Oh! <laughs> How about that? Scar. Finally getting something here. Killer's next starting off so strong. Let's see if Scar can make the adjustments. The tournament veteran here. I mean, this for those un online that might be uninitiated. Being on the loser side means you got to win two sets of three out of five. Jinok just needs to win one. First of all, Scar needs to put Jinok in the losers bracket. So you got to beat him twice. Easier said than done when he's looked this dominant the whole time. Keeping a hold of that armor, somehow blocking the whole thing. Oh, and he oh. ate up the dive kick! Crystalline Tremor! Such a dangerous character! Flex is up again, we're coming in, oh, even through the rock! Which is plus range in and of itself! And if he uses the uh, meter burn armor when he absorbs a hit, he takes no damage. And he crossed up down oh. to Scar, lives to fight another day, it's one game apiece in the grand finals. Can Scar make this comeback? Can he reset the bracket? And dare I say, do it for America! I mean, I know that's what you want, but to be honest with you, I'd quite like Joe to finally get his big win. He's been working hard. Ooh. Oh, excellent wake up. Always gotta fear that bad boy, as long as there are two grenades on Sonya. Yeah, jumping back, getting rid of the armor, but he's gonna eat the full jump in anyway. That low option. A late break, but because I think he's actually trying to deny the reload more than he's trying to deny the damage. Nice cancel into the block too. He's really been testing Scar with whether he's gonna let it down one rip or anything right there. And now this is party time for Crystalline because he can absorb everything and anything as long as it hits once. The roar overhead and he just, oh my God, he's it, so content. It allows him to take those risks, right? Oh my God, oh, and he gets another oh my goodness. OTG. OTG properties on that meter burn ground pound. You're never free of damage as long as he's got a bar of meter. Right, this is good for Scar though. Big a nice corner push here, has two grenades loaded still. Oh okay, so even though Scar's gonna knock down, he has to be wary of those two, two grenades that are on his belt. But if he absorbs the grenade reload, I'm pretty sure Crystalin can power through. And that's why the armored option is gonna be the arc kick instead. It hits multiple times. There's the cross up jumping punch. And Jinnok back in control. Here's the hard to blockable. Excellent block, overhead and low, oh. but another block the low. This might be it. And just like that, Killer Zinnok is one point away. Championship point for this man. One game away from being the grand champion of MKX, but if there's one player that's going to be in this situation many times, it's going to be Scar, and here we go, back to player select. This might be where we see the switch to smoke. I mean, back is to the wall right now. Oh, he goes straight back. Oh, maybe a stage change, to be Maybe a stage change. Yeah, Dead Woods. We're going to be switching up. Remember, the pit is one of those stages that has a corner escape on both sides. It's a symmetrical map. And and it was working for Killer, but it wasn't working for Scar, unfortunately. Every time he attempted it, uh, Killer was able to shut it down both times. And that's uh, why I think he's trying to take it away. I think he'd rather Jinok not have a corner escape than him have a corner escape. Correct. And he's tried a couple times to start with Flash Berry. I don't, I don't think that round one Flash Berry's worked uh, just yet for Jinok, but it keeps the threat there uh, for Scar to simply hold some pressure and start the match. And he, we're already off to a good start here for Killer Zenok. Oh, oh my god, I think he tried to do something about that, but he got hit anyway. L last time he did get a punish on it. Yeah, I mean, why not? Why, why wouldn't he just run in full speed if he's got the armor? Good to go, but Scar catches him again, knocked down. Goes in for that meaty overhead, but the delay wake up from Jinok. Surviving slightly, but the jump back connects. And that break is forced out of Jinok. Oh my word. Almost picked it up too. And with this grenade, Scar gonna be close to getting the round. Beautiful wake up there. There were negative frames on that call. Oh! oh. Scouts out the wake up. And he absorbs, but it's multiple hitting. He takes damage. Still alive though! Do not, don't count him out. Do not count this guy out. Goes in for the flex. Oh! oh. 
I respect the down four because if Scar pressed buttons trying to get that last bit of damage, the down four would have been so plus that she'd not got a guaranteed mix up. Yeah, four and one, and then at that point, it was pure mix. Scar looking good here, though. And, and he's, he's really changed up his place. He's so aggressive right now, and I like it. Yep. I agree with the decision. Oh! That is an answer for rolling cutter and a half. Smart plays from Scar. Instant dive kick to make it whiff. Come on! Beautiful stuff there. And that may be what Scar attempted earlier. Just made better execution error, but that was a beautiful decision. And Scar gonna tie us up at 2 2. Oh, I am so excited for what we're seeing right now. Two games apiece. This is gonna be tournament game for Shinnok and reset game. What does the crowd Scar. think? Do you guys want this thing reset? Yeah. Or do you guys wanna see Killers and take it right now? Oh, they want the reset. All right. All right, yeah, yeah. I heard significantly more noise for the reset, but I'm not surprised. We're in America. Of course, it's standard. We they also, want we they also, want to win. We want also to win. want to see more Mortal Kombat. I mean, I want to see more Mortal Kombat. I don't know about you. Here we go. Same matchup, different stage. Didn't say chamber. Very unique corner escape. Snooks, it's not really an escape as much as it is a corner armored defensive option. Correct. And an escape on the right hand side. This is a. Re this is a reset point for Scar and championship point again for Killer Zinnok. Here we go, guys. Starting off with the unblockable, changing things up entirely as Killer Zinnok throwing something differently at Scar when it matters most, when it could be the championship. Absolutely. Gotta watch out. I think Scar is gonna have to watch out for that dive kick. The forward one so fast, so advancing. And it's an excellent tool. Banks it on the overhead because he had the armor, but still answered back. Right, here comes the reload. Oh, it's a good start for Scar. He's got a couple of great punishes on the armor itself. He's throwing, he's throwing a lot of 1-1s, one the really quick, fast-hitting normals. Oh, cool again. Grenade conversion. We're going to see another reload, and now one oh, great connects. That should be it, but what a catch. And there's the flex. Even though she was still low to the ground, that is a true mid right there with that back two. Oh my god, that's still connected? Are and, you serious? And the EX leg press going to do the damage. That Scar was, uh, one game away from the reset. <laughs> yeah, but he's not going to be happy about that. Jinok doesn't want him to get to that point. He wants to have this grand finals and he wants it in the bud right now. Oh, caught by the overhead though, forcing the break. And his back is still to the wall with Scar. Plenty of resources to work with. Interruption. Oh. All right, here we go. This is Crystalline's playground. Oh, the escape. Excellent decision. And he's forced to take it. Good mix here, good grenade, call it dead, raw savage, down two by Scar, and here we go, on the offensive, so close to the reset, another knockdown, he's gonna put out the meaty grenade, excellent blocks by Killer Zenok, and he's the corner escape himself into some plus frames, oh, but it's the farm on the armor, still alive temporarily, and he catches the jumping punch, Scar, no breaker, here comes the flex, he meter burns it to a door four, and there is the whip punish, Killer Zenok is gonna be not quite a point, because he missed it! Oh, oh my, my goodness! God. Surviving by a threat with Killer Zenok right there and a final round to decide whether the tournament ends now or later. I mean, we're one round away from finding out. I can't watch. Ooh, Tries to punish yet, but late, a bit late. Scar waiting out that armor, waiting for his turn right now. Looking for the plus frames on the down four. Didn't get it. And Zenok relentless right now. The conversion. Just going in for the simple stuff. Let's not overcomplicate. Rolling cutter to enforce a low. Oh! Eating up the interactable. Going from plus to punishable. There's the breaker. Went for the same whip punish he had on the dive kick earlier with the back two. Didn't get it this time around. Has so much meter right now. Can flash parry all he wants to. Went for it right there. Once he didn't get the flex, gonna absorb the grenade. Pulls up another one, cause why not? Oh my word. The second he gets the plus frames, there comes the rolling cutter. He's got more to work with. Doesn't cancel it. Gets the down one, which is gonna be plus. Oh, oh I'm gonna do cutter. it! That's gonna be the tournament and Killer Dinok is gonna be the combo breaker 2018 grand champion for Mortal Kombat X. Congratulations to this man. Coming through the bracket on the winner's side. Back to the wall right there as Scar looked to get a little bit of momentum and close it out with some amazing reads, amazing gameplay. Nothing but a round of applause for this man. That is why Christian Tremor is the pick of the Ooh. tournament and Zinok finally Ooh, gets his that. major win in Mortal Kombat XL. Super proud of this guy and the journey he's had has been incredible. Sensational play from start to end. And like I said, before even Top 8 started, the way that I saw him get into Top 8, I was like, this is a guy to look out for. The way that he smothered people, the way that he smothered players who just played the game for so long, especially in North America, because we have so many tournaments back to back, for him to just absolutely blow them away, I was like, wait just a minute. This, he had, this guy might be a threat. He had such a dominant run in this top eight to begin with, right? So we saw him in winners, and the second we saw that, that first series he had 
against Tekken Master, where you go, hang on a minute, this guy, this guy's serious. Because we all, we all, we spent so long knowing Zinok as a Johnny Cage player, and then just one fateful night, he makes the twi the twitch, the switch to Crystalline Tremor. And I think it just goes to show why, in the final version of this game, in the right hands, this character is serious business. If you're a serious rushdown player in Mortal Kombat X, you've got to pick up this character because you're going to have a whale of a time with it. And not only the character, but the way that he played the reads that he was making. He played the matchup The perfectly. execution, it was exactly perfect. The way that he blew up certain situations with the grenades um, and the dive kick themselves, it was just incredible from start to end. That was perfect play from Killer Zenok, and that's why he's your Mortal Kombat champion. I'm super proud. I'm super proud of like all the players in this bracket. I'm proud of you know the faces we haven't seen for a long time, the up-and-coming players. I'm happy that we saw Rewind in this bracket, the return of Foxy, the return of Tekken Master, Waz coming all the way from Australia and getting top look eight at the, Look at the men on this well. stage right now. So many internationals and so much good representation of the NRS scene as a whole is right there in front of us. I think you, you can't put it any better than that. If you want representation on worldwide Mortal Kombat X, literally look no further than the players that you see standing on this stage right now. But the man of the hour is going to be Killer Zinok. I mean, he played out of his mind, and this was finally his big major MKXL win. Beautiful stuff. I believe that we got coming up is the trophy presentation. Yeah, I believe so. We'll be moments away from finding this out. But oh. I think we're going. All right. So, at... I'm going to let you do this. I did this yesterday. So it's your turn now, <laughs> Ryan. It's your turn. All right. So our top eight for Mortal Kombat XL at seventh place. First up, we've got Damaja. That's all y'all got? Come on, boys and girls. Come on now. This is Mortal Kombat X. Also at seventh place, hailing from the UK, a Foxy Grandpa. <laughs> Giving us the OK symbol. Telling us everything's all right. Cheeky boys. And coming down, Texas boys, Cusco at fifth place. And the man from down under, Waz from Australia, also getting fifth place. Congratulations to this man. And in fourth place, he needs no introduction. The man, the myth, the legend, Tekken Master. In third place, we've got Young and Uppercomer representing Noble Esports. We've got Rewind. Look out for him in the future, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look at him in Justice Slater, my dude. And now, someone who's been at the top of every single game that we have actually played, someone who has been a veteran, someone to look up to, this man, a legend. We've got Echo Fox's Scar. And your tournament champion from the land of Brazil, we've got Killer Zidok! Congratulations to everyone here that made top eight. It was amazing to watch. You guys are the champions. The real heroes here. Absolutely. Shout outs to you guys watching at home. Shout outs to Warner Brothers. Shout outs to NetherRealm Studios, the house of Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat X. Shout outs to you guys watching on the stream and you guys, the MPPs in the audience. Thank you for watching this amazing tournament. Thank you for joining me. It's been an honor. Absolutely. But that's all we have time for. Thanks for watching one final time. Stay tuned for more action we have in Justice 2 later in the day. Don't go anywhere because fighting games at Combo Breaker will continue momentarily.